in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Take it away, boys. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Top Ten Show here on Collider Live. Oh, Collider. I shouldn't say Collider Live. Collider. I'm in the Collider Live studio. We're in the Collider Live studio. Yes. I am John Roca. Uh, I am Matt Nost. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I don't understand why our Top Ten logo isn't up on the thing. I'm going to blame Cody for that. But It's a uh, two-shot, John. Uh, yeah, it's a two-shot. It's a static. Fine. I agree. I would agree with you. Right. And, Son of a bitch. He said he was leaving, and now he's going to sit in there. <laughs> I don't have zero problem with you chiming in. <laughs> but at the same time. <laughs> I'll, I'll be here to defend myself maybe, when necessary. Look, why don't we swivel this in? And just every once and again, can we get this on some sort of uh, animatronic little Absolutely. kick That's out? Yeah. You know? yeah. Every as much as we want, there's like a little button. We can do plugs and stuff. <laughs> yeah, just pop it in right it's there. Cake. It's yeah. perfect. Uh, are these mics in the camera, uh, Cody? Are these mics in the camera? No. Oh, okay. It's a two shot. I'm going to put them down. Okay. Well, it it's a professional matter. show that we I run here. Like Welcome <laughs> to the top ten on Collider. Uh, uh, I'm John Roca. Uh, I'm Matt Nose. Uh, for those of you who are listening to us for the first time, taking a chance on us on the Collider Live uh, YouTube feed, welcome. For those of you who've been with us for a while, welcome back. Yes, uh, we thank all, all our longtime listeners yes. and new listeners, everybody that's out there, all our patrons. Mm -hmm. uh, and today is a, a patron show. And yes. uh, we also have shout-outs at the end of this. Um, so we will do that. Did he change it? Dude, that is the laziest change. That is the laziest. I mean, the laziest. Hold on, let me put these back on. The, worst change. the laziest Look, change. I'm going to cut to the wide shot. For, for those this of you one. here, we go. There, there. You go out. there it is. Look at how terrible this is. So we're like plugging everybody else's stuff <laughs> as if we need sponsorship on this show just to get our logo shown. Ooh, Jesus. Or we're making some money on the side. Are we I, getting some I don't think the piece? witching hour has to go through this, for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, all right. Well, back to the two shot. Uh, thanks so much, as I, as we said, uh, for for coming aboard this train to the top ten. Uh, today we are counting down the best single location movies. This is Correct. a this is a, uh, a request from one of our patrons. This is from one of our patrons. Mm -hmm. I pull up the email right now, and I can tell you that. So you want to vamp for me? For yeah, yeah, seconds? sure. If you want to be part of our, you want to be one of our patrons, you go to www.patreon.com slash the top ten number ten. There, see all the multiple tiers you can donate at. Well, our top tier is the Boss Hog tier. Those, those are the people who get to select a topic for us. We try to do at least one a month from uh, that list of people who are uh, uh, donating at that level. So if you yeah. want, there's multiple do tiers to donate. You get multiple things. So if you want to become a patron, you can. But this is a patron inspired uh, topic for today. So Correct. Topic. From David Mitchell Baker. David Mitchell Baker, DMB. And uh, to all the, the people that submitted, like they, we liked a bunch of the different. I'll take this off since Cody's not going to be in there now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we liked a ton of different choices. Mm -hmm. Hasso had uh, one and one only, and I liked it. I don't want to say yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I liked it. We always pick Hasso, though. He's got to take a little break sometimes. Well, we pick a lot. We picked yeah. David before we pick, you yeah. know. True. We try and spend, it just comes down to best idea. True. So whichever one jumps out the most at us, and we're like, you know, we've never done anything like that, or it's been a really long time, or uh -huh. whatever the case is. Uh -huh. uh, and this one's uh, a great idea. Um, it's almost tough, though, too, because, like, I'm trying to figure out, single, does single location mean mostly in this location, or single location mean occasional? Does, do flashbacks count as not single location? Those kinds of things. I would say no. Yeah, I would agree. I agree. Um, I tried to, because I excluded some. It's like, there's one that's super long. And, yes, uh, technically they spend... 85% of the time in this one location. Uh -huh. The other 15% ends up being like 28 minutes yeah. of this movie or whatnot. And you're okay. elsewhere. It's a long movie. But it's right. like, I can't. I realize that almost all this movie you're here. But at the same time, you do go elsewhere to me Is in my German head. movies? That you're Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> With the champagne and the campaign and before they leave. Yeah. And then True. The, True. the British Navy or whatever they run into yeah. eventually. And then at the very end. Yeah. It's like those... Especially the end, like that. The end is part of it for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, I won't fight you. We both love the movie. We do, we do. Uh, but uh, I, I had to also exclude it for that because I, I had to go back and remember. Me and too. So sometimes I have to go and read the synopsis on Wikipedia or IMDb to remember that there are other scenes specifically. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, or what jumped out. That's why I think it's my number nine. I'm like, okay, I'm. 
it, it's from memory a lot of because it's been a yeah, while. Yeah, but you'll yeah, see yeah. why. Yeah. You'll agree with me. <laughs> Will I? Oh, oh yeah. I like that. I like well, no, that just confidence. in that it's been a couple of years, like that sentiment. Right. Right, right, right. Fair uh, enough. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, a totally fun uh, list. And thank you to David Mitchell Baker. And we will read your list at the end of the show. Yes, we will. Um, yeah, we'll do the whole uh, the paragraph before and your list uh, at the very end of the show. But thank you. Thank you to everybody that supports us. And that's why we're doing the, the shout-outs at the end of the show. Yep. And uh, it's our thanks to our patrons once a month at the $5 up and level on top of the whatever else we uh, you know give to you at those levels. Yeah. We are happy to say thank you on air. And we do that at the end of every month. Yes, we do. And uh, so we will be getting to that at the end. So hopefully yeah, you guys stay. And listen to all these gorgeous names. They all sound <laughs> – they all sound handsome and beautiful every time they just roll right off the tongue. How are you, man? How are things? Uh, I'm good. I'm yeah, good. You got a lot of energy right now. Well, I'm starting to, uh, you know, You're tiny re- bit of pep from this. Oh, you know? yes. A little coffee on my way. You're revving into it. Uh, it's, a, it's a murky day outside, and it's nice to have a nice, you know, nice warm cup of coffee. This is my kind of day. I love these days. I hate the sun. I love it because I live here. Right, because it's occasional that it happens. Exactly. Right, right, right. It's great when it's like, oh, look at this fun inconvenience. If this was... Five out of seven days, given certain times a year. Oh yeah, so like, this aggravated. isn't. Well, it's it's just gray and overcast mm-hmm. and constantly gloomy. Yeah, and it has an effect. I've lived in that environment before. It just does. Yeah. And out here, it's like, hey man, sunshine, mother. You know, it's just <laughs> <laughs> about three hundred and uh, burn, bitch. Yeah, 330, three thirty, three yeah. three forty days yeah. a year. Yeah, and, and the valley is strange for that. Like the morning is okay, and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. at like 12 or 1, it's like uh, Satan's asshole. It's like so goddamn hot. Certain times of year, yeah. Yeah, it's That's mind brutal. Long. We didn't have the random – this is weather talk about Hey-o. Los Angeles. Here we go, top 10. Hey, hey. thanks for watching. It's our tangents, um, yeah. We normally have that week. It's prolonged about 7 to 10 days the, towards the end of October yeah, 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 where yeah. it jumps into random. We got to 100 three out of these five days. Right. And we didn't have that th- this year. We had a – we had some 90s, right. like low to mid 90s. But we're also extending out longer than usually it's colder by now in mid November. Well, or, or towards tail of yeah, November. Yeah, today's the first today's day. Today's the first day that... we actually felt a little bit of coldness, right? Yeah. So it, it, now I've noticed it starts happening later and later, like uh, 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 late December or January, it starts to get cold. Or even sometimes February, where it becomes consistent for a few days. Hey, it's been it's up frustrating. and down. frustrating. I've lived out here when it's been so cold in December. Yes, we're, me too. We're not accustomed to it living out here. Yeah. Mind you, I've lived, I've lived through Illinois' coldest winter. Mm-hmm. So I've, li- I've lived through some cold, <laughs> you know? And it was still, because you get acclimated to, I just wear light layers type of thing, and yeah. you can always get by with that. And it was... Uh, it got almost too freezing, if not to freezing. Yeah. One, one, two nights. I was like, dude, this is cold. Like, this is freezing cold for LA. Yeah. I don't have the clothes for this because this does not happen. Yeah. I had a leather jacket. That was the best I could do and just sweatshirt underneath it. And, but yeah, it last year came later and it was mild. Yeah. Uh, has Catherine started putting the heater in front of her body yet? No, it went out. We had to turn it off to move a gas line, oh. and then we had to relight it. So this is a uh, oh shit. The manual on it is is this metal plaque, the placard type of thing. It's such so inconveniently placed, right? <laughs> so it has three uh, uh, things you can uh, switch it to. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But all it is is a long, yeah, probably two foot long uh, metal rod that's about. One and a half times the fat end of a chopstick, right? Oh, okay. But in a cubed, like elongated rectangle, right, like right, just right. going down. So it's got four sides. And you have to push it down and move it to get it to the other spots. Oh, and shit. it wouldn't turn to on. So <laughs> eventually we figured it out. But even to light the pilot light, I had to buy the long matches and then yeah. tape two of them at their ends. So you get one long enough to light the pilot. It is the <laughs> bottom of this stinking boiler. Because our charming house was built <laughs> in 1910, in, in 1938, uh, when people had longer arms. Or uh, I know, I don't know. <laughs> they had that machine, they had little things. Or maybe they just were dumb enough. They just turned the gas on for a while and just throw matches at it. <laughs> I, I don't know, but it's a technology that has been, you know, it's still legal. Yeah, sure, but sure. It doesn't just kick out gas. There are, you know, governors on it. And yeah. You have dials to turn. You can turn that down and whatnot. But I, I'm sure I'm not the only one. But like people, sometimes I, I, I have had to watch YouTube videos about how to turn on the pilot light, mm-hmm. uh, depending on what furnace or what. Yeah. It's it's mind blowing how many different types of furnaces there are. And you know, like you have to click that thing, and then you have to hold it, or you have to keep it there for ten minutes or whatever. And then you have to go inside and try to. I've those long extending lighters. Those yeah. are the ones I've used to light. I bought sometimes. those. They didn't work. They weren't long enough. Oh shit! They those weren't long enough. No, that's why. I 
had to take. So you know, the match is this, as long. This scares me. Like you then, blow your hand off fucking doing that. No, because there's so little gas coming out. You turn oh, okay. it to pilot mode, and then pilot mode is just like a slow release oh, of gas okay, okay. to get the flame going. It's yeah. not like it's gushing out. <laughs> Fucking, yeah. there will be blood. I don't know, you know, when the house was built. This is obviously, they, they bought this thing, it was probably in the 40s or 50s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, maybe the 60s, but it, it, it okay. looks old. <laughs> it works. It works. We're happy. Fair enough. But Fair got enough, it, finally got it lit right when we didn't need it. It got warm again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then now, thankfully, like today, we actually had it on during the day before I left the house. Oh, cool. Yeah. She, no, we don't do it. We don't turn it. I told her we can't turn the heater on because I, I burn hot. So to me, I'd rather bundle up when it's cold. Than to turn the heater on. So she has a portable heater. My, I'm talking about my girlfriend. My girlfriend has a portable heater that she carries around from room to room and puts distinctly in front of her body. Yeah. And during the and, and we're reversed because during summer, I will carry around a portable air conditioner that I put in front of my body because she doesn't like to have the AC on because she doesn't like, she gets too cold. So I have to carry the AC around this unit. Okay. And, and we'll leave the windows open, but I have to have it on my body. I'll even sleep with the AC unit on my body, the, one of those sure. portable ones, because that's the only way. But I have to angle it so that none of it hits her. Oh, yeah. Because she gets so upset if anything hits her. Well, during the summer, I've gotten her to my side to think of like, let's get it cold in here because then you wrap up in the mm-hmm. sheets and it feels really comfy. It's nice. And, yeah. It's so long as, you know, you got a small bedroom. Yeah. You put it on econo mode and it gets it up to speed yeah. and then it just only kicks on every once and again and you don't feel as bad because you don't feel like you're just wasting electricity Fair for your point. own comfort. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've had that argument with myself about all kinds of things. <laughs> oh, I'm so good about all this other stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is my the thing. balance. Yeah. <laughs> I, it outweighs, hopefully, fingers crossed, but I do my I do what I can. Yeah, yeah. I take out the trash. What yeah, I want? recycle. <laughs> yeah, I've what taken what stuff want? to the dump and like uh, organized it out. Yeah. Whatever. This has got to go to this side and I have to declare this and pay extra for that. I have the don't have a problem with that, <laughs> even though you're probably going to take most of the rare earth, uh, you know, minerals that are in that yeah. or, and whatnot and uh, spin it and make some money yourselves. But yeah. you're dealing with trash. So you do what you got to do. Yeah. Can I tell you what's going on in my world, man? Sure. Sure. I'm super frustrated because I've, my headphones, my Bose headphones, my cherished Bose headphones that I've had for two or three years now. Yes. And I've had replaced a couple of times because the left ear goes out on them. Uh, my most recent pair, mm-hmm. I took to Australia. You know, I went to Australia last week for yes. a couple days, three days. And when I came back in the Uber, I was so just kind of out of it from the plane ride that I left my headphones in the back of the Uber because okay. I had taken them. They were on my neck. Sure. And I take them This has to off. happen all the time. Yeah, right. Because I always have them on. Yeah. Always. So uh, I took them off for a minute and I was just like – and I, it was a Chinese driver. Uh, I could tell from his phone, the Chinese was on his phone. He had a hard time understanding me about where to go. Like he's driving it using the ways. Okay. But by the end, I'm like, oh, great. He was very nice. Took out my suitcase. Everything's great. Putting my stuff away, what have you. Um, halfway Putting down. your stuff away? Yeah, like he, he would take my... So he, now I'm picturing him like he opens your suitcase like he walked you into the house. <laughs> He's putting my stuff away. I think he earned those no, no, headphones, no, no. man. It, it, I think thing, he, It was incredible that he knew which drawer was what. Yes, yeah, so just intuitively, somehow you guys were in sync and he's like, I'm good with that. And then he saw he saw that you were in sync too and you <laughs> left him a nice pair of headphones. I did, I did. Uh, no, but like it was so frustrating because I, you know, he moved my bag, everything got moved in there. Um, and then I, I tried to, when I realized I was halfway down the road and so when i got to the house uh i put away my stuff came and came and put away my stuff and then i tried to contact my driver they say that on the uber app try to contact sure and it said you've reached your maximum number of calls try again in an hour the driver's not available mm-hmm. okay so in an hour same message the first time i try to get a number to send a message sure same message so by the third time the same message came up. Then I tweeted at Uber and Uber support. And they said, we're going to handle it. Don't you worry about it. We'll handle it. We'll get it on top of it. 24 hours later, what's the update? What's going on? We've assigned it to this person. Four different people were assigned this case for them to come back at me on Tuesday and say – and this is – we're recording this on Wednesday – to come back at me yesterday and say, uh, the driver claims he doesn't have your headphones, so that's it. What the F? This is a $300 pair of headphones. True. But you can't prove that you left them type of thing. I don't, I don't know. They could, if they wanted to, probably hide behind that. There has to be some sort of modest insurance within that. Yeah. I don't uh, know. Am I allowed to 
Bully them on Twitter? Yeah. Yes. Do it. Go. Am I allowed to bully them Why on Twitter? Why not? If it means that much to you. Okay. There's, if anybody, a, there's only one that can, one person that can answer that, and that's you. I guess Is it so. worth it? Yeah. I, I think, to get those headphones back or at least some kind of compensation, that would be worth it. Because the fact that it took them three Look. days to get in touch with a driver and get a message, the, that's ridiculous. The outlaw I know doesn't stand <laughs> for that. You know, He's a man of action. He would have a plan Don't being put me. in his <laughs> place. Right. Don't push me. Uh, a military <laughs> man. And a step-by-step I already reached out to a friend of mine that works at DMV, and, and I thought to myself, D- oh, what, should what, I? What is the DMV going to do? I was going to I was going to f- uh, forward him the license plate I number the and then get the information, this. and yeah. then go knock on the dude's door. That's this is why just because you got a friend at the DMV, they can't do that. Yeah, I know, I know they can't do that. <laughs> but I said, uh, like off hours, I texted him and I was like, hey, is this possible? He's like, if you want to give me another job, absolutely possible. Don't even sweat it. Do you have another job you yeah. can give me? And I was like, no. And he's like, then it can't be done. Yeah. This so. isn't. This isn't you, a movie. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> You're not a cop that I've known. Yeah. And now you need to run a plate or something, but yeah. you got to do it on the hush hush. Can I wear a cop's uniform, walk into a DMV and ask for. No, you cannot impersonate a police officer <laughs> in public and get special privilege. No, no, no. no. That's a crime, John. <laughs> that is a crime. What if it's Halloween? And they uh, I'm sorry. It's is still there, a crime. Because of the motivation of the character, albeit a character. Yeah, true, a character. Your motive <laughs> is the only thing that matters. <laughs> I wish you could hide behind the artifice of, I was acting. <laughs> but Thank you. <laughs> you believed it. Finders keepers, though, on this 20 grand. <laughs> so, Son of a bitch, man. I'm mad. I'm mad. Those, those, uh, those headphones are precious to me. It's ironic because I bought the 400s. You know, the, oh, the 700s. The sometimes, new ones. Sometimes life hands you an L. I know. You can't blame yourself. I got to go book another job. That's what it means. Fucking hell. I'm just mad. mad. You were out, you know, fucking air, you know, jet flying. <laughs> <laughs> Uber riding. <laughs> Uber riding. <laughs> iPhone having. House on the big hill. I love baby. <laughs> Where are my headphones? Uh, who wouldn't love to have a Ric Flair moment? Uh, I wish there was a moment in my life where I could just do that. Just go off on somebody. Just walk out like everybody understood the reference that mm-hmm. you – that, this guy gets it. That you know, that lady over there, whoever knows Ric Flair, just a, woo, just walk out of the room. I think if you had done uh, it after we won the tag team titles in the Schmodown tournament, that would have mattered. That would have been the time. I told Christian at if one point. If we'd done it in a live event, that would have been the time. I told him at one point, he's like, listen, is there any kind of budget that I could just do one thing? And I wanted, I found a flare robe, and it was like a buck twenty, buck thirty, but it was nice, right? For a buck twenty, buck thirty, yeah. And I was like, "You want to cover this?" And I will wear it out shirtless. I will come out as flare. I'll do it. And he's like, "There might be." This was early on in Schmodown right, days. Right. I was like, "I will full on if you want to do this stupid wrestling wow. thing. Wow, I will do this." At the very least, a couple times to make it worthwhile for having bought this. <laughs> I will not abandon the premise if it doesn't work out of the gate. I would have happily like seated that kind of situation. Hey, walk why not? Robe. If we're going to really oh. do this, yeah, let yeah, me yeah. have fun emulating. Absolutely. Uh, I but done. I didn't press him about it. It was just like, a, hey, what do you think about this? I found this on eBay. Yeah. It looks nice. Who's selling like, Ric Flair robes? Oh, there's eBay? all kinds. There, really? Well, there's. Some that have been manufactured, whatever else, that maybe right, the WWE right, right. at some point commissioned. I don't know. Oh, maybe. Or WCW. Yeah. And then there's some people that made their own. Yeah. And those are for sale. <sighs> and uh, some people want a lot of money for those. I think if I ever go heel again at the Schmodown, that'd be great to walk out in one of those fucking ropes. It's outlaw in the back and all this. Kind of, oh, dude. Got to go shirtless, bro. And <sighs> you wear two shirts at all times. I do. Says I'm ashamed of my body. I'll have to work out if I'm going to do Do you wear that. two shirts to bed? It's like two undershirts? No, I do wear one undershirt to bed. Okay. I wear underwear and a shirt. And my girlfriend, is because she accepts me for who I am, and I don't feel shameful in front of her, I'm okay to wear one shirt. <laughs> But we took videos last night because we're setting up a thing in, in my office to shoot something for the YouTube channel that I'm trying to build up, the other YouTube channel, because mm-hmm. I have all this time. Uh, exactly. And- you need another project. <laughs> Especially if you have to edit it and post it, do all the social media. You need another project. <laughs> I just can't stop. Anyway, we were taking shots of me and in a shirt, and I was just like ashamed of my gut, just ashamed. I think this is. I know. I don't, I don't look terrible, but I feel like I look terrible. So, it's a personal thing. I know you claim about weight, and you have never looked overweight or remotely I know. fat to me. But you, within your body, because it's all perspective. I still feel right. Yeah, right. it is. I have body dysmorphia, mm. just like a lot of people do. Yeah, we do. We fucking do. I love it. Twenty some minutes into the show, it's just. <laughs> 
body dysmorphia is the conversation we're having. <laughs> One last question. Anyway, if anybody works for Uber or works for uh, yes, uh, bully pulpit, use yeah. it for for Bose and his Hyatt man can help me in this situation. I'd from, really appreciate Bose. Yeah, if any of our listeners work for Bose, give me a massive discount on the Q thirty third five twos. Just casting <laughs> life preservers out there. Anybody? Anybody? I'll Hep promote it. I'll promote there? it. I'll give you love. I'll follow you on Twitter. Whatever you want. I just want those QZ thirty five twos. Uh, you even know the code. Yeah. So of course the model number. Of course. Of course. Uh, black ones, please. All right. Um, one last thing. Uh, did you have you watched? Have you started watching The Crown yet? Yeah. Four eps in. I'm two in. Okay. Are you liking it? Yeah. I'm liking it. Yeah. Right? It's good. I want to see her become more active. I imagine that's going to happen as the episodes go along. The first two, she's a little bit like kind of reacting to what's happening around her. And I want her to start taking more decisive action as it goes along. So Yeah, but that's kind of her world at this point. Yeah, right, isn't it? The monarchy is just a reaction. It's not Yeah. It's not pushing any of the action within societal Yeah. Uh, understanding on that level, like they're not they're not pushing political policy, they're mm-hmm. not waging wars, yeah. they're not inflicting taxes, and other than the taxes they're trying to get from the people to subsidize their lifestyle, it still doesn't make sense to Americans. But whatever, if yeah. you, taxpayers want to pay for that, I guess you can do whatever you want to with your money. True. Uh, so the reality of it gets into, I think it's the third one. Oh really? That one's really good. I told my girlfriend I'm, I'm um, she's going away t- tomorrow night. I told her I'm I'm moving on ahead cuz she hasn't even watched the first two episodes, first two seasons. She, oh. watched, she watched a few episodes of the first season but it was kind of slow for her. Okay. Slow burn for her so she didn't wasn't 100% behind it. But we started together last night because I think this, you, you can jump in right now. You can sure. absolutely jump in right now. Sure. You don't need to necessarily know that much about the first two seasons. Uh, but no, if, you, if you know historically the story, you're Even fine. that, the, the settings are all national or international. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And they're all true. And you get the, the relationships from the beginning. Like mm-hmm. the issue between Margaret and Elizabeth, the issues with her husband, the issues with Margaret's yeah. guy. You, all of that is laid Ever out changing for you. dynamic of yeah. who am I, what am I, what's my purpose, what's my goal. Exactly. It's all there. So yeah. it was seamless. So anyway, uh, if you haven't watched The Crown, recommend it to all of you who are maybe hesitating watching it on Netflix. All right. Let's get into this thing. Ha- uh, let's jump into it, Matt. What do we do here? Uh, once we set a topic or David Mitchell Baker, and thank you, sir, once again for having done that, uh, set the topic. We went our separate ways and we created did. personal top ten lists. Show back up here in camera. I'm doing this. <laughs> Straight to you, buddy. First, we do our bottom three. Pardon me. I do my bottom three. He does his bottom three. I do my next two. He does his next two. Then we trade one apiece. Once we have revealed our personal top ten list, we create the shows between the two of us. Boom. Uh, jumping right in. Let's do it. So I tried to honor as much as the singularity of they were at one specific location for the vast entirety, if not the entire movie. Agreed. I And that's why my nine, it's like, uh, I don't know. Uh, ten for me is Locke. That's my nine. Okay. Yeah, good movie. It is. I don't know how much I'm going to go back to rewatch it. No, but you can appreciate it for what it exactly. was. Exactly. Yeah. That's why it's 10. Yeah. It's not bad. It's just like a, it was really interesting, and Tom Hardy pulls it off. Yes. And it's a dude in a car. Yep. And it is fully engaging the entire time as you see this man juggling all these balls. And will they crash to the ground or will they not? Yeah. Uh, between his family, his job, and his side hustle, so mm-hmm. to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one-off occurrence. Tom Hardy is, you know. He's great. He's excellent. And it's full of – if you go on the cast list and you see the incredible amount of actors they got to come – For voiceover? For yeah. voiceover. Tom Holland comes yeah. on as his son at yeah. the end. You're like, yeah. Tom Holland? What, what in the world? Yeah. But you hear it and you're like, it's unmistakable. It's fascinating to see. And, and the, the way – they're telling the whole story while he's driving in the car. Mm-hmm. Everything is happening while he's driving in the car. Yeah. It's not like – Six hours later or anything like that. It's legitimately the whole thing's happening. He's driving in the car. There's an inciting incident at the beginning of the movie, near the beginning of the movie, and that's what escalates everything. And you find out why he's in the car, mm-hmm. where he's going, why he's going to where he's going, and then you get an, you get a window into his business, you get a window into his relationship, you get a window into his other relationship, and you get a window into who he is as a human being and both sides of it. Both good and bad. Mm-hmm. And by the end, you're like, well, and then it just ends. And you're yep. like, God damn. Yep. It was just a it was just a, a window into this snapshot. Diesel, and then boom, it was closed. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. Just a snapshot. Just yeah. we start at point A and he's already moving, he's on the road. Yeah. And we you know this from the trailer. And the best part is we haven't said what this movie's about. We can just talk about the overall arching yeah. structure because we can't ruin it. No. He's in the car. But yeah, that's what she needs <laughs> so to know. Legitimately, he's in the car and it's mm-hmm. fully engaging. It's all Tom Hardy of yeah. seeing him. Mentally kind of scramble and the fights he has. Yes. Which are uh, great. Yeah, which are great. Yeah. Good for him. It's yeah. a really good movie. I know, and, he's, and he's got a – and he's sick. So he's, yeah, on he's, top of that, he's dealing with – everything else. Yeah. Well, it's the stress leading up to this day. That's why he's sick. Yeah, right, right, His right. His body is just tired and <laughs> he's gotten to this point. Everything's unraveled. He knew it the yeah. whole time. He just couldn't 
figure out how to do it beforehand. I couldn't stop it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. What's your number nine? Nine is my question. Okay. Uh, misery. Oh, I think oh, – damn, that's tough. I don't – like – so how long does it take them before they get back? And then they're there until at the very end where they're at that restaurant and he yeah, asks for the yeah, bottle yeah, of water yeah. or whatnot. Yeah. They're there for but I don't remember how long – in my mind, it doesn't seem like it's that long until they get there. Yeah, I don't think it is because he's driving the car. Yeah. So he's, he's – I think it starts with him. Is it him just straight driving straight the car? Straight driving the car like through the credits and the window and the snow. I think it's all of that. And then you like get the idea of what's happening. I think okay. there might be a beginning scene with Lauren Bacall at the beginning and then an end scene with Lauren Bacall in that way. Okay. But I don't remember. I don't remember either. Yeah. But I, 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 no lie. I legitimately watched maybe four or five days ago, watched the last half an hour of the movie randomly in one of the channels. It's, it's good, man. You know, it is. That battle between them the at the end is oh, psychological God. terror throughout. Yeah. yeah of course. Of this just unhinged character. Yeah. And Kathy Bates. You believing every second. I mean, mm-hmm. she hobbles him. Yeah, that is one of the realist, oh. the realist. The, but I, that's I, in the top three, isn't it? What do you mean? Like top three moments in film where it felt authentically real. Oh, uh, where well, of that kind of palpable violence. Yes, like the 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 curb stomping in American History X. Yeah, good call. Right, the ankling, yeah. and then what else? Oh, yeah, she hobbles. There's got to be others. Yeah, yeah, where someone just gets maimed so brutally, and you watch it. Yeah, you're just like, oh my god. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 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 Um. So, just for its memorable nature, it's a mm-hmm. it's a deviation from a lot of what's else you know what else is on my list, mm-hmm. and the single location using it for more terror. I guess there's some of that a little bit later. Sure. I guess on some level. Mm-hmm. Uh. So to amp it up, but. It's a, it's a damn good movie. I just couldn't remember that opening little bit right there. Yeah. So does it qualify? I believe it does because memory serves. They just jump right into this thing. Yeah. Uh, but the, I've, you know, it's been a while since I started from point A. Mm-hmm. I've caught it over the years on whatever and yeah. just kind of watch it out through to the end. I hope I'm after the hobbling usually when I come in. Oh, yeah, because the hobbling is really uh-huh. rough. I will watch it. I won't turn away yeah. type of thing. Yeah. If it comes up and be like, well, I, you agreed to this. You knew it. I turn and just hear the screams. I can't watch it. It makes it drives me nuts. I'm no good with that kind of stuff on, on film. I, I don't mind overall violence. Like you, you could shoot people up all you want. And when I'm watching a movie, oh yeah, the second you slice someone's like gut open or something, I just go, I can't fucking deal with it. It's too local. I just can't deal with it. But the Stallone is Rambo, and Rambo when he's no using the machine gun, yeah. and people yes. are getting chopped in half at like the femur, and it comes. So then his leg comes just flying out of direction. That would have been a good like 3D movie. Yeah, good point. Uh, hey, would, oh, would Hillary Swank's uh, 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 in Million Dollar Baby when she breaks her neck? Is that one that feels like single? Look? Oh, brutal. Yeah, yeah. That feels real, right? Because you can hear the crack when she hits that fucking chair. Yeah, but at the same time, the hobbling in American History X feel more real. Yeah, yeah, that, that's you're right. They really do. Hers is bad. I'm not taking anything away from it. Those yeah. those seem vicious. Yeah, good like, point. There's, you know, <laughs> the devil's inside you when you did that type of thing. <laughs> you know, El Muerto. <laughs> Oh, no. El Diablo. <laughs> no, otra vez. Uh, <laughs> all right. What's your uh, number eight? Yeah. Uh, my number eight is Ex Machina. Oh, nice choice, man. Because they're out, they're out of the house. That counts. Yeah, they're Damn. at his house. Damn. That's a great choice. You know what? Fuck it. I'm moving. Uh, I'm going to put that on my list. All right. I'm going to put that at number 10. That's fair. I mean, it's a big house. Yeah. It has a lot of different flavors. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they're... Okay. At his house. That's a good point. I had something else at number 10. I'll I'll happily say what it is, but I think that's the one, man. That's a great choice. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm I'm changing it now. Yeah. Dope movie. We've talked about it a bunch of times. Uh, It's come up recently on a number of shows. Yes. Uh, Oscar Isaac, uh, Alicia Vikander, Donald Gleason. Mm -hmm. uh, This whole idea of what is life, what isn't life. This Mm -hmm. whole idea of what responsibility do you have, things you create. Um, And also the idea of like, well, it's a sentient thing that can figure you out, starts to figure out. Once it does, you know, your uh, ideas of morality are relevant to an AI. Yeah. Right. It doesn't enter into the calculation. Mm-hmm. I have a goal. Yes. I will re- achieve my goal. I will adjust tactics to achieve my yes, goal. Yes, but I have an ultimate purpose on this end. And yeah. then once you'd assume, if it's smart enough to do that, then once it sets that goal, it creates another goal. Yeah. And agreed. just continues to build and learn and figure out how to beat us. I get your fear. <laughs> of course you get my fear. It's logical fear. 
I just don't. It's not feasible. I just don't. Ultimately, I don't see it happening. I really don't. You really don't think we're ever going to achieve AI? We will. Okay. Do you I think th- we'll control it? Uh, th- we'll put in some sort of fail safe that ultimately it can't succeed. Okay. Like a simple kill switch. You know, it's just in a room that is unguarded by any modern technology yeah. out in the middle of nowhere in the desert. You know, Area 51 type of thing. Yeah. There's no computers for miles. Nothing. They took it out but of the base. But something's got to connect the computer, the thing to the computer, right? That's why the EDM thing works because it can't be – it's not uh, whatever it's called, uh, the electro- oh, like, EMP, yeah. EMP. Electromagne- electromagnetic pulse. You're right. That works because it's not attached to the actual system. If you have a kill switch that's attached to the actual system, then the AI can short circuit that kill switch from working. If you have an EMP, that's well, different. I'm saying ultimately you could just – it's a power source comes from one thing yeah. and you put it on a switch in the middle of nowhere and be like, you cannot get power. We will not allow you to have power any other way oh, okay. type of thing. Right. This is where you're – I don't know. We'll figure out some sort of – that may not make logistical sense ultimately, but I don't see us going, dude, Pandora's box opens pretty easy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's just – <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's crazy. Oh, shit. I, I think everybody going into it, I hope, is under, you know, fully aware of the uh, negative possibilities for us as an inefficient life form in its eyes. I get it. It's wearing my skin as a Halloween costume. This is not cool. <laughs> Don't know why it's vindictive against us. <laughs> Doesn't seem in its nature if it's that cold just to wipe us out. But... I don't, I don't know his motivations. Yeah. I don't want to be farmed. <laughs> That's my yeah, big fear. Sure. Uh, all right. So number 10 was Ex Machina. Uh, number nine is Locke for me. Number eight is Rope. Okay. Yeah, I love that movie. Uh, great Hitchcock film that I, I kind of discovered again. Uh, going Because in, in L.A. you can go see old school movies. You can go see old movies mm-hmm. at theaters like The Egyptian um, or The Arrow. Or sometimes they'll show them at the Arclight and stuff like that. Well, I kind of went on this Hitchcock binge a couple of years ago and tried to see all of them in the theater when I could. Because yeah. right? I didn't see a lot of them uh, on TCM or whatever growing up. So I caught up on like Rear Window. I caught up in the theater. All these kind of things I just caught in the theater. Rope was one of those ones that I kind of resisted because I wasn't sure. And it was color. Rides, so I was like, eh. yeah, and then I watched it, and I was like, "Damn, this shit is tight!" And it's all in one apartment, yeah, and it's just a battle of wills between Jimmy Stewart and his two former students, and they've killed somebody, and that somebody is in the trunk, and they're trying to figure out who's telling the truth. They they think they can just like gloat over everybody, these two guys, and then no, eventually and- Jimmy just kind of figures them out step by step, yeah, and it's like, man, this is a really incredible throw, all during a dinner party, during a dinner party, so. Well, go out and watch it. I, I have seen it's one of those I, I, I know facts about it. Okay. I've never seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's some incredible acting. It's not a long movie. It's yeah. like, I think it's an hour 30, hour 40. Uh, and these two dudes, one guy is kind of like the leader of uh, the two guys who's making this all happen, is, who's the most arrogant. The other one is a little more nervous. Mm-hmm. Uh, they share. I think they share a girlfriend or they, the girl was with one of them but then went with the other guy uh, currently. So there's that kind of stuff. And then people's parents are coming. And they, they invite Jimmy Stewart as their former professor to come hang out and be a part of this dinner party. But the whole time, they want to be able to like tease Jimmy that something is happening mm-hmm. here. So they constantly are asking him questions and then Jimmy catches on and then he's like, okay, what is this all about? And then he starts to kind of turn the game as it's going along. You're just like, man, this is incredible. So if you haven't seen Rope, I can't, I highly recommend it. Fantastic taut thriller. All right. Top notch recommendation. Top notch. There we go. No one's going to fight you on that. It is a good movie. Yeah, go ahead. Here. Um, number seven. My number seven is The Raid. Uh, okay, that's a punt. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had it in a different, and then I moved it down. Do and... you have the both of them, or just... No, the okay. first one. Raid yeah. Redemption. Agreed. Yeah, Raid Redemption. Yeah, agreed. Uh, all right. Uh, then, then, uh, which is six? My six is Die Hard. Yeah, see, that's the one I had to take off my list. Why? Well, because he rides in that c- uh, car for a while before he gets to You think it's a while? Thing. It is a while. I mean, for me, it's all perspective, right? Subjective, rather. For me, it feels like he's on there for a while. And then uh, and then uh, there's stuff going outside with uh, the cop when he goes to the convenience store. There's stuff going outside yeah, in the helicopter. The other true, guys. true, true. So that kind of pulls it away a little bit And that's me. why, you but know. I, I won't fight you on it. I think it's a great choice. I wish I could have put it on. It's It's the... Uh, was it, uh, what is that Jan- guy's name? They, you know, on Family Matters. Yeah, Reginald? Yeah, yeah. Is it yeah, Reginald? Reginald Johnson. John Fel Johnson. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Um, that does pull you out of in dealing with the FBI agents. Right. Johnson and Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the singularity of him once he's inside and it's set up yeah, is so tied in with everything about it. Like to me, it is, it, 
It's the only – it's one of the few that I can think of uh, places that I've been to that I know that the movie was shot there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just like, oh, there's – we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. There's Nakatomi Plaza. Nakatomi. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, that's Die Hard. I don't know. <laughs> You're like, what can I say that has been I, said? I mean, the Who is watching us for the first time that's never seen a movie and it's like, well, hold on, what, Die Hard? You know, that's out there. Die Hard? What, what, is, uh, what is that? Who is, is that a German film? Is that a French film? Die Hard? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know pronun- Germanic pronunciation. So somebody out there, check me on that. But uh, Wait, I got to look that up now. Die yeah. Hard in German? Die Hard? <laughs> Uh, seems a little harsh. Uh, I this don't... is a comedy show, by the way. Don't get all fucking offended either. Uh, uh, I, I'm not worried about it. Go ahead. I, I'm the one that said it. So if you were offended, that's fine. I'm more than willing to admit it was terrible. So I have zero problem with that. The German translation of Die Hard, hard is Sturb Langsam. Sturb Langsam. Sturb Langsam. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, can you do that with any Germanic phrase? I think so. Uh, that's, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Look at the 10. This is a, this is a funny site. 10 really goofy German translations of famous movie titles. Dodgeball is straight in the balls. That's what it translates to in German. Okay. What and, is it? Does it have the Germanic? Oh, does it? Uh, Vol auf die Nuss. Straight in the balls. Uh, Animal House is called, a, I believe a horse kicked me. <laughs> <laughs> ich glaube, mich tritt ein Pferd. Well, I'm sure I'm going to get so uh, much shit for that. Uh, oh, airplane is the unbelievable journey in a crazy plane. <laughs> nice. Not on the nose at all. <laughs> the wild comedic adventure on a jet. Perfect. <laughs> Blades of Glory is translated to the Ice Princes. D- that's good. Come on. That's good. <laughs> I like that. D or die Ice Princen. Die Ice Princen. Um... What else is there? Oh, I guess that's it. That's that's funny stuff. I like that. Uh, yeah. What else can you say about Dar? Yeah, I think Matt nailed it. There. There's so much. But about. if you want to say the exclusion is too much, then maybe you know a, a, a no, case I'm could not be made. You on it. I know, but I'm a case could be made. You. It was just for me. Uh, and that was your six. That was my six. Okay, my seven is another Hitchcock film called Lifeboat. Okay. Yeah. If you haven't seen Lifeboat, it's a fantastic black and white film. I think it's late 30s, early 40s, right in the middle of World War II. And the film is about what happens when the Germans sink a not a sink a boat, and the Germans they sink the ship. Mm-hmm. But in sinking the ship, the the submarine that was used uh, break or cracks as well or whatever it, it crashes into the boat. So the Germans spill out of the submarine, and the uh, people in the boat spill off the boat, and they scramble onto a lifeboat. And so oh, a combination of the two? Exactly. So it's like who's – tell? it's like this whole kind of psychological thing on the lifeboat. So everything yeah. happens essentially on the water and on the lifeboat uh, and they go back and figure out who's, who's doing what and a couple of them are injured and then it's like as this goes along and they – then the German – a couple of the German guys start to like work – people mentally and like oh yeah yeah they initially play like their victims they were unwittingly part of the nazi or whatever i think it's nazi or world war one uh part of the german army and they they it starts to and then eventually slowly it starts to turn and you're just like oh shit and hume cronin is, is in this mr cocoon oh, he's real young okay. in this film and charles i think charles lawton is in this as well but it's and i know william bendix the guy who played babe ruth in the old school film this is a fantastic film that I – whenever it's on TCM, I will watch it for a little while because it's all – it's essentially theater because they're all in that lifeboat the whole time and yeah. you're trying to figure out who is who is trying to work. It's like Survivor mm-hmm. for an hour and a half. So uh, that's what I would say. If you haven't seen it yet, it's so damn good. Um, all right. <laughs> I mean you haven't seen it. So what can well, we, yeah, I, what I can have we it. discuss? I know, but at the same time, it's one of those – it's a Hitchcock. Yeah. There's, there's only so many and everybody knows that both of those are good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I, just haven't for whatever. That's I've seen it, most of his others. I think people come around to things as they come around to things when they're ready to. Yeah. That's the way I feel about movies. Uh, my number six is Moon. That's a punt. Yeah, I figured. I figured. Okay. I don't know <laughs> what that look meant. No, just that I knew it was – I knew I had it lower and I knew you'd have it higher. That's all. Okay. Yeah. So as some speculate out there, then that was a time that you were gaming the system to make sure that it ended up. No, no, no. I know, I know. Oh, oh but yeah, others yeah. have some people think postulated we, yeah, yeah. that we would go. You know what? I'm going to devalue my own opinion just to fuck over the other guy. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. This is still my opinion. It comes in at six. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, five. Uh, we well, you know before we get to my oh, five. Yeah. 
Why don't we take a uh, quick break and hear this uh, note from our sponsors? Wow, that was nice. I uh, appreciate us doing the work for the sponsors, but we appreciate the sponsors being on the show. Uh, yes, damn straight we do. <laughs> damn straight we do. Each and every week, we thank you. Yes, we yes. And uh, all right, so my number five. Yeah, continuing the list. Considering uh, jumping right back in is uh, 127 hours. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I don't know why. It's one of those ones. It's just a kind of. Do, okay. you, do you really rec- like uh, recommend it, hardcore man? Uh, I mean, look, it's it's. Franco yeah. at his best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a dude that's pinned by a boulder because you know that. Yes. Because I— From the trailer. From, from the, the trailer, trailer, but I remember him on Letterman before the movie came out. The actual guy? Yeah. Oh, wow. Telling his story. Wow. Uh, and you start thinking about it, and you're like, it's crazy like to saw through with a dull blade yeah, yeah. your own stinking arm to escape out of there. Uh, it was incredible to watch. Utterly yeah. incredible to— as he's trying to get himself out, knowing that he's pinned there and he goes through every form. Basically, he, he gets himself to the point of, I'm going to die. Yeah, yeah. And it's him lashing out because you know he cuts his mm-hmm. arm off. Mm-hmm. There's no other motivation. Could you do it? I would hope so. I don't know. Like, you'd have to go into some place mentally, right? Yes. Like, so. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. this isn't an everyday activity. <laughs> I mean, you get through the skin once you get to the bone. That's, oh, yeah. that's where you with just a like, dull blade. Yeah, with a dull blade, it's gonna take you forever to the bone. Yeah, I. The smart thing would be just to break it. <sighs> I know. Oh, so you lose the, the. It would take less time, and it's easier to cut through the meat if there's no bone in the way. Wow, that's the that if I if I am strong enough to start cutting off my arm, I hope I'm strong enough to break. Break it on top of that. Someone's made me throw up. The, the idea of breaking my own arm and hearing the crack is sickening. And then he plays it into the camera. He's pulling out the guts. <laughs> <laughs> like right into camera. 3D. Yeah. Danny Boyle just took it a hard zoom straight in. I don't know how he was at a rack focus or <laughs> uh, hits the camera perfect. <laughs> Too bad they don't show this at the Muppets Theater at Disney where there's you put the glasses on. Yeah. It sprays you with water and like bubbles come out and all that. You really get the effect. <laughs> <laughs> just wisp- blood on your face. Oh, no, look. <laughs> exactly. It's wisping around, so there's like a wind effect as well. <laughs> Spraying like, oh, I'm getting, ah, oh my god, oh, it's just brutal. You get slapped in the face a little. <laughs> <laughs> this 4D is incredible. <laughs> oh, I'll do the re-release on this. If we don't get five percent copyright, top ten, 2019. Before the end of the year, we'll get our lawyer on that. I'll gladly work the system, the, the whatever that is. The that is the our idea, guys. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't you take it. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh, all right. That's your number five. Mm-hmm. <coughs> uh, I'll watch it. I'm sure I'll watch it soon. Uh, my number five is uh, Dog Day Afternoon. Okay. Yeah. I kept it. Oh, go. It's a little bit of a cheat. It's a little bit of a cheat. It's just because. So what you're saying about Die Hard yeah. to me is this. Okay. When they go outside to his male lover and whatnot, it, that gives me just as much understanding of that individual yeah. as what he's going through in the moment. Whereas but, the original Val Johnson is like, yeah. he's helping along, but it doesn't help me understand McClane right. outside of that one walkie talkie. Well, I think that's the thing with, with me. It's because he calls the male lover. It connects it to the location. Sure. Right? Sure. And so for me, that, that's a little more uh, for, it works a little bit. You're not wrong. Me. I wrote yeah. on the side, but it's yeah. just like I don't know. That's that that to me is kind of a pivotal scene because it right. It is absolutely. It gives you the motivation yep. in part of who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's tough. I mean, this is a 1970s film. You're in one location, uh, and the whole, almost the whole time, and it's like, but it, the tension there is just like palpable the whole time with uh, uh, Pacino and John Cazale and mm-hmm. uh, Charles Durning and everything going on there, and then Charles Durning like having to push back the more angrier elements or more aggressive elements of his police force uh, but still yeah. trying to negotiate with Pacino. Pacino's like kind of like at the beginning you sense that he's like in control but as it goes along it's, he starts yeah. to lose the control as it goes along because he's spinning. He is. He is. He's spinning. He's doing his best he can and he's taking like cues wherever he can take the cues. Like just Yeah. This plan he, fell apart a long time ago. Yeah, exactly. He's not doing this because he's like some kind of uh, warrior for the working man against the system. He was doing this to buy f- buy a sex change operation for his lover. Yeah. And when he starts doing the Attica, it's so it's so um, foundationless because that isn't his point. I love 
at least I read years later that that was an improv line from him and the, the crowd, they're regular people, and they just started chanting it back because Attica just happened. And yeah. It was a, a cry of the underclass or the, the subjugated or the yeah. poor or yeah. whatever going, yes, stand up, like fight back type yeah. of thing. Yeah. To get that from a New York City crowd, just of random strangers going, yeah, Attic, <laughs> hell yes. Like, oh, wow, that is crazy. Just to, that gives you an understanding of the psychological profile. Oh, yeah. Of society, at least in New York City at that time. Certainly in the 70s. Hell yeah. You assume that's got to be reflective probably the same way it is today. The yeah. larger cities have a lot of those individuals and they're spread out everywhere else. Yeah. I don't disagree with you. That's for sure. Uh, uh, anyway, it's just a fantastically well-directed film. I think it's Sidney Lament who, who did Dog I Day I believe Afternoon. you're correct. Um, I'm a little rusty on my uh, on my. Doesn't come up with a down. <laughs> I'm a little rusty. <laughs> that page in the Outlaws uh, Encyclopedia is a little dusty. It used to know. I used to know everything, but there's just you keep shoving it in. There's not much left. Yeah, Sydney Lumet was it two and a half hours? Yeah, two. No, it's only two hour and five minute movie. So wow, it feels like a two and a halfer. It does, right? Because they're it, and that's the thing about sad the location. whole time. That's why. Yeah, you're a good point. Good point. Yeah, yeah. it feels longer because it's just like uh, uh, yeah. The whole time it's like oh, because you know it's not going to end. No, and it, with every gut punch, yeah. it hurts just a little bit more, and then that you just carries with you until the next gut punch. Right, it's almost merciless at the airport. It is. Oh my God, you're right. That's it, true. It, it put us all out of our misery. Yep. yep. Spoiler alert <laughs> <laughs> on a forty how many year old uh, yeah, movie at this point? It is. Um, all right. What's your number four, man? Uh, four is buried. Yeah, one I haven't seen. I know you yeah. like that movie. I have not seen that one yet. It's just – so you want to talk about a single location. Boom. Yeah. Done. OK. To do the Got Buried. Uh-huh. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. You do love it. He's got uh, – trust me, you have a bigger love of Ryan Reynolds than I do. I, I'm just saying you love him. That's all I was trying to make fun. Oh, yeah, but you're implying and I understand the implication. How dare you? The nice thing is his camera catch all this bullshit body language now. So if you're not – yeah, this fake shock. Because if – I'll, I'll go to bat for this movie. It's good. Just say just friends around him is not good. And just look at this. Watch this. That's not a good idea. Transformation. Tra- just friends are good. Movie. The outlaw goes out. <laughs> I wish. The hat just flipped up. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> took on a huge character. All right. When we get the slide in screen, then we get the outlaw auto hat as well. <laughs> It'll be another. You can hit a button. Boom. Hat gets planted on. <laughs> what would you say? It's like Mask, the cartoon. Robotic <laughs> hand comes down perfectly, places it on your head. There's... Right, lights, great music. It's going to be perfect. The logo, the uh, theme song comes yeah. in. <laughs> Outlaw, he's here to right all the wrongs. Outlaw. I, I want at least 50% on that. I think, yeah, I, absolutely. I think I should get all the, you know, the, the songwriting absolutely. royalties. Absolutely. If we make it happen, you get 50% of everything. Well, you know. <laughs> absolutely. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give you all the songwriting royalties. Just, uh, you know, I just say we we make it a union contract. That's <laughs> all. I don't know what that means. I feel like you're screwing me over by saying it. I feel like I'm protecting my rights by <laughs> oh, doing here that, we go. is what I'm saying. It's a matter of perspective. That's all. <laughs> Why did the top ten fall apart? We got into a court fight about the rights, the royalties with a stupid Good. song about the outlaw. <laughs> Dude, the... 50 people that tune in, they are going to be transfixed. That's true. They're going to love it. Fair point. And all we need to do is to get those 50 people to multiply to an, another 50 people, and we build. Oh, that's a good point. But I think I think if the hat— On the top ha- of the other project that you have, let's create <laughs> another project on top of that. If the hat comes on, the robe should come on for you. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, your shirt gets ripped boom. off. And boom! The rope. Oh, comes on. great! All What'd right. you say? Now Woo. I got lighting cues yes. that I think we both would like. Some smoke effect every once again would be appreciated on this half of the table. I don't know about on that. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm not yeah, saying I'm use down. it every week. I like it. Pepper it in when yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah. It, sure. <laughs> sure. Let's build the show, and we get all this. It's not a problem. There's a lot of former oh, Chuck E. Cheeses out there, oh, so we can get some you know, animatronic skeletons, and yep. then we just change good call. what some of these things do. <laughs> we have like a little butler type thing right now, and it just does it. What'd you say about Buried? Woo! Buried! Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it's in essence like Locke. He's in a coffin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, boom, go. And he has cell reception every once and again. It's vaguely coming through. Mm-hmm. That's and I haven't spoiled anything, and it's a damn good movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's Agreed. the singularity of the location is like I'm bumping it higher because yeah. I've seen it a few times. Uh, whereas Locke, I've only seen the once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Locke, you could easily rate higher if I end up going back to you every once and again. Sure, sure. Uh, so that was my four. Okay. Uh, my four is Dread. Okay. Because I had Raid, I— Oh, you took Dread off? Yeah. Oh. I love Dread. 
For the Die Hard also occurs in a building. Well, you know, just, just how many of these can, you know, <laughs> just like you with Hitchcock, because it looks like you're going to have three Hitchcocks. No, no, only two. <clears throat> really? Only two? <clears throat> uh, really? Yeah, only two Hitchcocks. Okay. I don't count the other one because it occurs at another place. You're watching them cur- watch something in another From place. From the narrator's perspective, though. But which you're is... still watching another location. But I hear you're from his we'll location. We're enjoying it from so we're living in the thing with him. We're pre fighting before we get to we're, it. We are pre fighting. <laughs> we're tailgating before we get to the game. Uh, yeah, but who doesn't love a good, you know, cold beer? <laughs> Perfect. This you think this is coffee? <laughs> no way. Oh, have you seen Ford versus Ferrari yet, man? Yep. Dude. Saw it in Dolby. Yeah. Uh yeah, the Atmos. Yeah. So good. Catherine, uh, I didn't know took out her Bluetooth uh, wireless earphones, the noise-canceling yeah. ones, and actually put it in her ears because it was so loud. <laughs> I was like, really? I mean, I knew it was loud, but I didn't think it was that loud. There's only been one movie ever that I thought was too loud. Oh, yeah? What was that? Uh, Beowulf, when they did the— Oh, shit. Okay. Whatever the— th- I've only seen it the one time because I hated it. Yeah. Uh, the screeching character that was like the son of Angelina oh, Jolie yeah, somehow, yeah. when he yeah. was screeching, it was so loud that I was covering my ears and it was still like rattling around in my brain. Wow. And I was like, this is uncomfortable. I love movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love movies. <laughs> this is unbearable. I've gone out before to say I think it's too quiet. Oh, wow. Well, for the when Crystal Skull came out, yeah. seeing that theaters, I couldn't feel Indy's punches. You know, with mm-hmm. that ridiculous like, like – <laughs> Yeah, and it's usually like that little punch. Yeah. You can feel it on a good enough system, and it's like I'm not feeling that punch. I'm not asking to be blown away, right? But you can feel it. It's just a ridiculous over the top sound effect. What if you had the 4D thing? It's like it really punches you. A lot of ideas. A lot of ideas. It can really work. Really happen. People are willing to surrender themselves but to the experience. Exactly. I think you even uh, like a step further and you do the Soren, California Soren with the thing that's oh, suspended. Yeah. Yeah. What if you did that, all the same technology, and one of your favorite movies, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and you're like floating through space. You do Holy that with any space shit. movie or a submarine movie. Like it shakes and you're like, oh my God, I feel the depth charges. Oh my God. Yes. Or gravity. Like when the ship starts falling. Yeah, apart, and you're like somehow oh. falling as well. I'm down with that. I'm 100% yeah. down with this idea. I think eventually maybe movies have to kind of gravitate towards that. As it's hundred dollars a ticket for the experience. Seems oh, like. look at you jumping up the prices super quick! I'm just saying, just pricing out the the little man if, if, for a guy that likes to stand up for the I working love that class. The guy who just bought a house in California points to himself as the little yes. man. You are not the little man anymore, guy. You moved uh, up a tax bracket now. But who's doing all the work at that house? You know what I mean? The next tax <laughs> bracket up. Would then also be able to pay somebody to do all the work. That's fair. And I'm doing it. It's, you make yeah. sacrifice. I'm happy to do it. I yeah, am not complaining are. at all. I, you know, I go as fast as I can. I, you know, I hate to fucking. It doesn't even matter. I don't think you'd. But I don't think you'd hire somebody even if you had the money. No, certain. I've, I've hired people to to help. I, I didn't do any electricity. Okay. And the plumbing. Uh, do you think you could let go and never hire anybody if you're rich enough? Sure. To, really? Sure. You wouldn't want to micromanage it or stand over it no. or whatever? No, so long as you – I didn't do it with the, the shower. Okay. The, we had to somebody, although I had to go in and finish the grout for them afterwards because they screwed it up because right. of – You told me the tile and everything like that, yeah. Yeah, it took two two full days of like 12, 16 hours down there with this, this little thing the size of a toothbrush and just slowly grinding off grout through an entire oh, eight foot eight foot by like four foot kind of yeah. telephone booth shower. Yep. You curb stop me before I do. Uh, it took a long. It was tea. That was. I'm saying cumulative hours. It took yeah. me. Yeah. I spent cumulatively like five days in that shower alone. Five mm-hmm. and a half, something like that. Right. Because I had to tear it down three separate times. Technically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Just, yeah. So that that alone that took a lot of time, but it's you add up the hours. I'm at five and a half full days of hours working yeah. on this shower. Yeah. That took me a week and a half of like nonstop. I'm down there for twelve hours. Right. <laughs> that was not, you know, I put in a couple of 16 hour days destroying a shower. That was just one of a whole list of projects that yeah. have, had to be finished. Whew, wow. Good times, man. I love it. Good, but I'm in uh, decent shape. So, yeah, you are. I'm enjoying shape. that. Uh, yeah, so Dread was my number four. Like I said, uh, great stuff here from Carl Urban, Lena Hetty, Lena Hetty. Uh, but um, Don Hall Gleason again. Don Hall Gleason, yes. It's uh, so incredibly well directed. Yeah, the guy from The Wire. Can never remember his name. Okay. Um,. Let's see. Who's that? Oh, it was uh, Stringer's partner. Why am I blanking on his name? The guy that was technically number one, but Stringer. Oh, Wood Harris. Yeah. Yeah, he was in Remember the Titans. Uh Uh-huh. Right. He's been in a ton of different stuff. Yeah. 
Uh, he's in this. Can't Ol- remember the Olivia Thurlby is his partner, the female. Okay, That's just, I couldn't remember her name. Yeah, she is someone that I don't understand why she never blew up because she's never given a bad performance. What I else is she's she in? She's good. Incredibly in this. cute and very attractive and good at what she does. So I've never understood. She's like that mix of like a Anne Hathaway type of actress. Um, Rachel McAdams kind of vibe. She's been uh, in. But that's my question. What else has she been in? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Dread wasn't a huge success. She was in United 93. Juno. She was in Juno. She was uh, the best friend it. of Juno. Uh, she was in New York, I Love You. Um, let's see. No Strings Attached. The... She was in the. Uh, she was in uh, Being Flynn, Dread, uh, The Wedding Ringer with Kevin Hart. Uh, okay, I'm sure some people have seen that, but I remember that being poorly reviewed. I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. Goliath Chappaquiddick, the most recent one. Oh, Chappaquiddick, I saw. Yeah, yeah. She's in that as a, a character named Rachel. Uh, and then of course, Rachel. White, oh, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody came with White Orchid. So to me, it's just always been fascinating that she's never been like high on the list of, of people – uh, to be cast in romantic comedies or to be cast this kind of thing because she has the McAdams vibe. She has the Hathaway vibe. I don't know. Maybe those two just have those slots and she can't get past them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. It's weird because she's good. She's really yeah, good. Yeah, and she's, she's good in this. Yeah. Uh, just the, the, I don't know. This and The Raid to me, they're the same movie. Okay. Okay. Uh, Fair enough. Dread with – what they do so amazingly are all the drug sequences. Yeah. They make this the weird. Slowdown, yeah. But hyper stylized, you're on something that's releasing all kinds of endorphins and whatnot, like yeah. ecstasy on top of something else, on top of something else, on top of like pharmacologically something even more effective, uh, effective rather, five what's times it, over. What's it called? Like slow mo? Isn't it called slow mo? I think so, yeah. But when they slow mo the one dude, is slow mo. They slow mo the one dude and then yeah, throw him over the yeah. balcony. Yeah. And just to him, oh, it lasts. Yeah. Like a hundred times longer than everybody else. Everybody else, it's over in nine yeah, seconds, ten yeah. seconds as he falls to. The, although there's like a hundred and something floors in this thing. Yeah. But the oh my god! So he feels this for how long? Hours? Mm-hmm. How long does this take? Ten minutes instead of ten seconds? Yeah. That's brutal. All right, because you know it's happening and you can't stop it. Yeah. It's all in slow motion. You're yeah. Like, oh my god! It's br- and the 3D. This is some of the best 3D. You'll ever see uh, if you ever see it in 3D. It's fantastic. Dread is and Carl Orban's great. Never takes the mask off. That's fantastic. It's the character. Yeah, I love it. It's like the Mandalorian. That's the thing I love. Mask stays on. We'll see what happens. If mask never stays on. on. Yeah. Are you enjoying it? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm loving it too, man. I like it a lot. Yeah. Spoiler alert. It's good stuff. Yeah. Good. Stuff. <laughs> Shout out to Verizon giving us customers a year for free without paying for it. It's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. Yeah, I was surprised by that. I saw the special when I was in Australia. I was like, yes, sign me up. 12 months for free. Um, yeah, all right. There we go. What's your number three? Uh, my number three is the other Hitchcockian. Oh, rear okay. Window. Here we go. Here's the battle. Well, because you're mm-hmm. seeing it through his eyes. So right. you're experiencing it through his eyes. Right. So he's the conduit by which you're understanding the story mm-hmm. because it happens in the constraints of where he's at to me. It's a single location. Right. But you're saying because the action of what he's following is happening from afar? Yeah, in another location. Okay. So to me – yeah. But I get your point though. It's the I conceit get, of the movie. Yeah, I get your point though, right? All you care about is because that would be you. You are now him. So you're like, okay, and I'm stuck in this when uh, – what's his name? name uh, oh, uh, Raymond Burr. Thank you. Yeah. I was sitting there going, Richard Burr, 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 Burr. I knew it was an R. <laughs> Once I get to the first name, I get to the second. Yeah. Because I knew him from the uh, the lawyer show. Oh, yeah. Uh, My mom. Perry Mason. It. There you go. Perry Mason. Yeah. Uh, I just show. remember the movie, TV movie version one they did where they're at a courthouse or a state yeah. capitol or something. A guy falls out of – and upstairs, and he has to piece it all together and whatnot. My mom liked Perry Mason quite a bit. It's a good show. I watched a lot too. of Perry Mason. Yeah, man. Uh, but when he shows up at the door, that would be us just sitting there like, oh, dude, don't make any noise. Like, maybe he won't know this is your place. <laughs> but he hasn't figured it out. Well, to me, the action is occurring in another location. True. Which is why, the, the, to me, the conceit is – I told – I'm not – once again, I'm not going to fight you on it. But I, in my mind, uh, I didn't put it on my list because it's all happen- – It's it, there's stuff happening in another yeah. location. So when I think of single location, everything's happening in the one location for the most part. Um, but it is, in his mind, all happening in the one location because, like you said, he's stuck here. Mm. So everything, every, everything has to go through him. Like uh, Grace Kelly showing up has to go through yeah. him. Uh, and you're everybody. Yeah. But once again, all the action you're seeing from his vantage point. It's yeah. not like they cut to and then suddenly we're down and these people are tussling. Right. It's all from his. So it's, we're experiencing that 
as he does. Yeah, the helplessness of being able to uh, being unable to stop it. You have a suspicion. That suspicion seems like it's fairly accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't act upon it. So yeah. sitting terrified from afar. Yeah, good point. All right. Yeah, that was my three. What you got? I'm not going to fight you. Uh, Breakfast Club. All right. I was hoping you had it. Yeah. Oh, no, you didn't. It was close, but it's like, okay. eh, you know, I think if I was a few years older, I would have the attachment. Yeah, that I, was yeah, doing. Yeah. I like it and I understand all about it, but I don't have the same attachment to all those actors. That's fair. That for a generation, I well, fully get. Well, it's not just the actors. It's, it's the actual movie. Well, it's the story. Right. The and story the, is so good and relatable and it's, it's high school and like. Who's the nerd? Who's the popular kid? What happens when they come together? What's the reality of, of the situation, right? How, they, how do they work it all out? And to me, that's what I enjoy the most about the film is that this is um, – these are characters you know. These are characters that you've experienced and regardless of generational thing. And what's funny is now – I wonder if you could do a breakfast club now. Right. The, the, of course. You, well, the, the popular girl would not be the cheerleader or whatever. It would be someone else. We don't know that. Right. When was the last right. time you were in high school? High school. Now the nerds rule the world. The nerds would be the cool kids in high school, not the jocks. So I'm told. Yeah. I don't. Uh, but I don't know I don't, if that's you still the case. Yeah. yeah. I, Is it blue state to red state? Like in the red states are the are the. Are the uh, uh, athletes still the coolest kids or are the nerds? And in the blue states, are the, is it the nerds or the, or the athletes? I don't know. I still I, think it's nerds I, now. I would imagine it's just a general appreciation more for all of it. <laughs> you know, there's a lot less negativity. That's where I don't think this movie could work. I hope so. Because the, they would never allow for stereotypes to be displayed like this. Yeah. It's like, you're the jock. This is you. Yeah. You're the nerd. This is you. You're the emo goth. Here's the uh, misunderstood young youth in, right. in Judd. Uh, but that's the gift of the movie is we presented these stock characters or stereotypical characters. But then we see behind the curtain about what's constructed these kids. And it's mostly the parents mm-hmm. and, and the society and the school teachers. Right. This is they force them into these narratives, into these uh, stereotypes. And it's fascinating, you know. And so that's what I like about the movie. It is a shot against parents. And it's a shot against this idea of, like, you know, what's what's the line in the movie? Like, once you grow up, I'm convinced your heart dies once you grow up. And it's like, okay. Ali Sheedy says that. And so it's like, okay, it's this whole thing of, like, fighting against the system that's been set up for us to feel this way about ourselves and have to fall into these caricatures so that we can exist within the construct of the system. And they're breaking the system by having these emotional, vulnerable, uh, honest moment, uh, honest exchanges, mm-hmm. both, both positive and negative. Yeah. Because there are some negative exchanges where, where Claire says to Anthony, Michael Hall's character, like Kevin, I no, I'm not gonna. Or I don't know if it's Kevin, but something like that. I'm yeah, I'm not gonna say hi to you in the hallway. Mm-hmm. It's not how it works. And he's all like, hey, "What are you gonna do?" That, right? that kind of thing. So you know, because well, you, you're viewing someone from afar, and you've built up a preconception about who they are, and, right? And what they are, and the construct of high school and yeah. the ridiculous pecking order that is created. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, although. I mean, I know mine, like, there was tons of different groups, but I don't think that there was a general, like, we're better than you type of. It's like, we do our thing, you do your thing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it's a good high school. It was a small high school. Mine was that way. Mine yeah, was I can't much. imagine, like, a hu- at a huge school, that yeah. would be impossible. Yeah. But I had we, a, we had, like, 617 people. Yeah, I had 120 something in mine. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, definitely they were the cool kids, the cheerleaders, all those people. Yeah, we had those, but it was just like there's so few, in essence, <clears throat> yeah. kids. It's just like, yeah, the, you know, yeah. these are the people that like to build the – do the committees and run the yearbook and whatnot. But mm-hmm. it's awesome that there's, you know, eight of you that seem to enjoy it. Great. Yeah, yeah. It's perfect. That's, you know, almost 10 percent of our class or whatever. So it's probably like eight or – seven or eight percent of the class. Awesome. That's on one project. Done. <laughs> <laughs> it's just good to get kids involved. Type That's of. true. A lot of those are usually on like student body, and then student body would cross over in two, and then you yeah. get the jocks and whatever else. And the kids that would go just past property line to smoke cigarettes. Oh, You used to be go. able to smoke at lunchtime at my high school. Yeah, mine too. So you had to bring a note from your parents. Yep. There was a smoking designated area. Mm-hmm. And ours, it was the back of the high school under the stairs. You could smoke there. The smoke, whatever. They, they had a name for it. I can't remember what it was called. Maybe a smoking area or something like that. I, uh, I got caught smoking at school one time. <laughs> In gym class. You were smoking in gym class? Well, I was outside because there was this double door that led off. <laughs> and at certain points, you know, I, I'm a senior at this point, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, 
and I went outside to have a cigarette knowing if I can hotbox it and get it down quick enough time, I can make it back before he gets back. Right. And as I'm finishing going to throw it, there's this, there was this perfect rain gutter where the, the upper part when it met it and there was a gap between the two coupling and the coupling. Oh. So you just perfectly throw your cigarette and it's gone. Yeah. So there's no proof of – you just got to huff this thing down as quick as you can, get yeah. through as much as you can until you feel like you're going to get caught. And the gym teacher caught me. But he liked me because I was a good guy and I also uh, – at that time it was okay. I enforced – on a couple of younger bullies. Yeah. Okay. They were taking care of other kids and just kind of put them in their place of, you're not the biggest dog out here. Right. Uh, because they, whatever, it was mostly seniors in my class, but there'd be a couple of juniors, a couple of sophomores or whatever, sure, kind sure. of sprinkle it in. Uh, yeah. So he was just like, kind of, uh, I'm not going to say anything, but don't do it again. Yeah. And I was like, this is never going to happen again. I won't say anything. <laughs> so thank you very much. And he just was like, walk on in. Uh, <laughs> Well, he's like, meet me afterwards. We'll smoke a whole pack. It could have uh, been. Uh, could have been. I had, I had weirder teachers in high school. <sighs> yeah. What's your number two? Uh, two is Moon. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Because it's a, a singularity of perspective, understanding, location. Yeah. And then the philosophical debate that it asks of you about humanity and shit, right to life. Yeah, yeah. And the concept of what is life. And is it right to engineer this or to lie to someone to mm-hmm. all the questions that ask of you over and over again? So you're just living in this little, you know, fucking uh, uh, recursive mm-hmm. environment that just keeps kind of you know, blending back on itself, so to yeah. speak, or mutating back on itself and just living in this paradox on some level. Yeah. And he's just on the moon. So you get this. Weird, isolated, marooned atmosphere on top of it. So for the singularity of it, it's a single location. It is utterly by itself. He yeah. is literally by himself, and but yet not alone, mm-hmm. uh, which is an interesting question to ask yourselves. If you guys have never seen Moon, go out there. Please see it. It's a really good early Sam Rockwell when he's showing the world he has the chops that he's gotten the Oscars for later on. Yeah. Duncan and, Jones, uh, fantastic job directing that film. Yeah. David Bowie's son. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if uh, he gets nominated for Jojo Rabbit. Yeah, right? I liked it. So did I. I thought it's one of my favorite movies of the year. Yeah. I was on FYC earlier today arguing for Taika Waititi as uh, Best Sporting Actor nomination. 100%. I think he should absolutely be nominated. 100%. The high wire act of, of portraying Hitler for comedy yet not losing – the bubbling, side of. Right, the bubbling, ugly, mm-hmm. angry, violent side of him. Well, because of the beauty of the conceit of the character. Yeah. Why, where that character springs from, yeah. couldn't create those thoughts because it can't think like that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's a beautiful little, look at this rascal type of version. Uh, you know, I was just keeping it warm. That's what best friends do. <laughs> oh, that line killed me in the theater. I can't wait to watch it again. Yeah. I really can't. But then when he gets really upset at him, you see okay, the yeah. come I feel like oh, we're spoiling, right, right, you know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Good I, point. All I right. feel like, yeah. All right. So that was your number two? That was my two. All right. My two is the pun from earlier, Raid. The Raid. Two. Damn okay. Shit. Good for yeah. you. I added as high as six. That and mm. Die Hard were flip-flopping. I just think because I removed Die Hard, I have to put this here in my opinion because I think this is a film that I absolutely thoroughly love. And, and you com- had Dread where? I had Dread at uh, four. Really like this, uh, yeah. you know, cinema construct here. I'm more, I was more focused on the fact that there's a lot of these that are one-name movies on my list. I didn't think about the idea of it being like a building construct for a just number boom, of Just boom, location? I got your location right here. Right here. Uh, but yeah, this thing, I mean, you do start out in the back of the van. But once you get there, you get there, and it's the rest of the yeah, movie. That is nothing. That tells yeah. you really nothing about the character until they get into yeah. the chaos. Yeah, man. And the somehow believable and completely unbelievable story as it as it unfolds. Yeah, yeah. Just, I, I don't think the sequel is as good as the first one. People, uh, you know, think it is. Yeah, I don't I'm understand in, that. I'm not in agreement. It gets a bit tedious at certain moments, and the fights go on a bit low. Some of the fights go on just a little too long. Well, you could say that about the first one. Well, I like the fights that go yeah, on. Yeah, but that one, one fight where it's two on one. Oh, yeah. Nobody oh. stands. I mean, they are going so hard, and they get, they crush each other. Yeah. And then they get up, and they're still spry as can be type of thing. <laughs> It's, fa- it's fa- I mean, fantastic to watch. Utterly fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Thoroughly it's enjoy that film. Perfect choreograph or uh, choreographed chaos. Yeah. Um, do you think the sequ- do you think the um, American remake would be any damn good? I don't know anything about it. I can't imagine. Yeah. How do How do you do? Yeah. I mean, it's not old boy. No, 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 no. It's a simpler story, but yeah, I guess you could. I I, I don't see why not. Yeah. I mean, it, perhaps. Uh, it's, it's martial arts heavy, so who would 
How, when was the last time like a super, super martial arts heavy movie like that hit huge stateside? No. I'm not saying it's not possible, but no, it's no. been a while. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you. A thousand percent. It does not happen that often. Hmm. It does not happen that often. So you're right. You're right. I mean, And it's the only way you can get away with this fighting style. I think Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was the last one before that one. And that's martial arts kind of a, to an extent. Not in a, yeah, it's not, more. Right. It's the fighting it's, and it's the more fantasy and all that. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, so. Yeah, no, this one's. Very, it's just a specific st- style of action to pull off yeah. visually what we associate with these types of movies. Yeah, yeah. I always wonder why the villain never got more work that I saw. Yeah, yeah. Not saying he's not working steadily in Southeast Asia somewhere and just right. crushing it. But maybe that's what he's doing. It I hope so. want to do more – like crash over into American stuff. You know, It's possible. Because uh, those two guys – two of them show up in uh, Star Wars in the, yeah. uh, in the, yeah, the um, Force Awakens. The scene where everybody makes uh, makes reference to Ellis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kanja, Kanja Club. Club. Kanja Club. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Um, that I mean, to me, he was the standout. I just every once again those, those dudes pop up, like in Parasite, the dad. I was like, oh, that's the dude from the Good, the Bad, and the Weird. I think yeah. it's called. Yeah, so Kang Ho. Um, and I liked him. He's my favorite part of that movie. You know, and I tweeted that because I, I interviewed him here at Collider for mm-hmm. Parasite, and I, I had no idea this guy's like the Robert De Niro of Korea. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. When I met him, I could believe it. Incredibly nice guy. Very giving. Very fun. Cool dude. He crushes it in Paris. He really does. But I know people are like, you don't know who you've interviewed. This is the Robert De Niro of Chris. Dude, he's just he's cool. He's totally chill. He had an awesome shirt. My God. Go see that interview on YouTube. It's, it's a like, fantastic shirt. It's like you don't know Style. who uh, – was it Sarah R.O.? Right. Who that was until you knew who that was. Yeah. And yeah. then you're like, oh, I get it now why you guys, you know – Hold him up to be your Babe Ruth, yeah. Barry Bonds, Mike Market, you know, McGuire, whatever. Right. Super slugger. I get it. Yeah, agreed. And hopefully he was clean. <laughs> I don't care if he took. I would just want to know that so I can understand a reference of his numbers. Yeah. yeah. But if just – I don't care, athletes. Just disclose it. Sure, you can take whatever you like. Yeah. It seems dumb, but it's your life. So long as it's allowed within the rules, go crazy. Yeah. Uh, all right, what's your number one? Is it the same? I hope so, 12 Angry Men. 12 Angry Men, hell yeah. It's the easy no-brainer, first movie yeah. I thought of. Another Sidney Lumet film. Yeah, his first mm-hmm. film. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There you go. Based uh, off the Reginald Rose play. He did a bunch of TV work before this. Yes, he did. Sidney did, yeah. Uh, it is genuinely one of the ones from that era that anybody now can go back and watch and you get sucked in because the pacing is just as good as these people become to assess what they Mm -hmm. view the truth or how they're viewing the truth right now. Yeah. And Fonda basically pleading for the accused. Yeah. And how that conversation develops throughout with 12 angry men. Nobody wants to be there. It's a hot day in, what is it, New York? York, yeah. And all you hear about that is means it's hot and super muggy. Like just the type of humidity that you shield yourself from now as an adult doesn't happen out out here. No, thank God. No, we both moved. Yeah, we both moved away from it. Yeah, heavy humidity is when you walk outside and you're instantly just sweating because it's just wet. Yeah, yeah. Going back to Orlando, that was what was like the feeling going back to for that live event. Mm -hmm. Walking out of the uh, uh, hotel before I went to bed that night, just walked for a couple a couple of miles. Yeah, he was like, oh my god, you feel like you're wearing the atmosphere. Yeah. (laughs) Like it's just decoding you. Yeah. Like, it's like someone threw a massively l- large, warm towel on top of your body. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, oh, God. It's the worst thing. It's a southern hug right there. Oh, good call. I like that. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice way to put it. It is a nice way to put mm-hmm. it. Oh uh, yeah, Henry Fonda, Jack Warden, uh, uh, Ed Begley Jr.'s dad. Ed Begley's mm-hmm. in this thing. He plays the uh, the old man, uh, juror number ten. Um, oh my God, who's the dad in Christmas Vacation? Oh, I, I know for- you're talking. Yeah, about. I forget the actor's name. He was in what? Necessary Roughness. Yes, he yeah, was yeah. in. Yeah. It's a long. E.G. Marshall. E.G. Marshall. Good. Point. Yeah, he's he's in there, and so there's so much that goes on into that. And I directed the play uh, back at Florida State, so it was it's a fun play to do. It's a fun movie to watch. And Matt's right; it totally holds up. It, it t- does. still holds up. It's written so well. You know all those people, mm-hmm. uh, and so you've experienced them in your life. And the, when the when the change happens, Lee J. Cobb versus Henry Fonda at the end, there you're just like you're heartbroken. You used to you were hating this guy through the whole film, and then when you find out the reason. Reasons why, and it's not. Yeah. It's not. There's not. It's not. It's not highlighted in a massive way. It's just there, and he has his moment, and you're just like, oh my god, 
Wow. So, yeah. Bringing his outside bullshit into a conversation that it's not a part of. Right. Which right. is what we said about you know this show. You may disagree with us, and we're happy to have the disagreement like a civil conversation. Yeah. But if it comes like, you mother... <laughs> you're like, all right, well, there's no way we provoked this in you. Yeah. So... Yeah. This is something else. This is. Yeah. I'm, I will not respond, but if you need to vent, go right ahead. Yeah. You got to work something out. You do. Let me know. That's fine. Get it out of your system. You know, puke it out. <laughs> puke it out. Puke it out oh! onto the world. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Ah, I feel so much better. I'm glad. <laughs> but it has nothing to do no. with whatever we're doing. Absolutely zero. Uh, all right. Well, that's our separate top 10 list. Have they been putting the graphics up? We should read our top 10 list. I, the graphic, I, right? Okay, sure. We can build that in for them. Go yeah, back to that type of style that. to help them out because I think the I, I sped through the last one. Yeah. Not to say I'm not going to watch it, but I, there's no point. Of course, of course. And to try and find where our list in, and there was no graphic. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, But we didn't stop for them to help them out. Yeah, we should put the graphic in now. So we, we got to be proactive. Uh, so I, I tried to do it last time. You were like, no, no, let's keep going. So. You did not. I did. You did not. Go back and listen to that audio. I will go back and, and listen I say, to that audio. And I say we should, do, we should read our list for the graphic. And you're like, it doesn't matter. We should move forward. And I was like, all right. It probably happened. It's a pretty good impression of me for those of you guys watching out there. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, all right. What you, what, what's your 10 oh, so through my, 1? My, uh, yeah, 10 through 1 is at number 10, Locke. 9, Misery. 8, Ex Machina. 7, The Raid. 6, Die Hard. 5, 127 Hours. 4, Buried. 3, Rear Window. Number 2, Moon. And number 1, 12 Angry Men. Oh, well, I look forward to the – that was a great list. I look forward to the graphic that will come for mine. Uh, my number 10 it was Ex Machina. Number 9 was Locke. Number 8, Rope. Number 7, Lifeboat. Number 6, Moon. Number 5, Dog Day Afternoon. Number 4, Dread. Number 3, The Breakfast Club. Number 2, The Raid Red Redemption. And number one, 12 Angry Men, which I imagine is our number one on our list there. Already got us started off. Okay. And I am in agreement. <laughs> so Moon was 2 6. Yeah. What was your. Raid was 2 for me. That's another 2 6. Oh. Do we have anything else? Nothing else in the top? Mm -mm. Nope. No. Time to bring out the coin already. Wow, that was an early one. That's an um, early coin toss. Do you, okay. I just think Moon is actually a better film. It is. I put it higher on my list. I put rate higher on my list. So uh, I got to reach over in this bag. Tell you what, I'll let you have Moon on this one. What do you want? In and then down the road, if there's another tie, I get the I get dibs. I feel like you're already looking at something. That's fine. I don't know if there's anything. That's fine. I don't That's think fine. there's anything. If you are, congratulations. <laughs> All politics is local, and you just worked to me, That's and right. you're perhaps in your favor. I did. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. Next. Raid Redemption. Yeah, that I got. Okay. So I have one, two, three. I have Breakfast Club next. What do you have? Rear window at three. You have breast, so do you want that there? There you go. Just give me system. You tell me though that in your heart of hearts you think of that as a better movie than Rear Window. Mm -hmm. Rear Window at times feels dated. Oh, okay. And plus, she's twelve and he's seventy-five. That's a little ridiculous. Uh, let's move on. I'm just saying. It happens. It happens. <laughs> You know, much like life, love yeah. finds a way. Oh, yeah. Good point. What's your number? All right. We're going to do this a whole way down. Uh, in essence, we only have to put on. So you added X Machina to yours. I did. And we have Locke. Yeah, Locke's That's my it. number nine. Yeah, so we can slot those in if you want at like nine, ten right yeah, now. Yeah, sounds good to me. Because they're so far down. Yeah. They shouldn't leapfrog uh, multiple spots for us. All right. All right. So I got buried at four. I got dreaded four. Well, Barry just oh, Barry the lead. Wow, you know what? Uh, no, 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 no. You started buried, then dread. I was saying I'll flip a coin for that one. No, fair. because we the the agreement was on the first one, not on the second one, and I just preempted. This is how good I am. Talk no, about no, a compromise because no. you know there's three slots left, and if you go dread, dread buried and we tie again, I get dips. I'll do double coin flip. We we'll go to three coin flips. Well, no, it'd be two. You would get. If you win, you get yours, then I get mine. Vice versa, ah, if I win. And enough. then the last spot, okay. we could do another All right, coin flip on that. That bring way, it's a little. Why bring you out the, the coin. <laughs> let's do this thing. Here's, here's another animatronic mm -hmm. that we need. We need a little have the butler, then hand comes in with the coin. Yeah. Camera shot right on it. Lighting from above. Add a little smoke to that shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guys, this is... Definitely going to happen. 
because after that, then John's going to build a special effects show. Oh, yeah. And yeah, he'll ready. be up to date. He'll yeah, be up ready. to date. All right. All right. Hitting the ground as per usual. Okay. That is a Batman. Oh, wow. I don't know if that counts, but okay. I'll accept it. Do you want to contest the flip? No, no. That's fine. Do you want to like put Barry that as a coach's challenge? Well, yeah. I'd say if you're going to say it's going to hit the ground, let it hit the ground. You let it hit the table. So it's next time, just flip it. So it hits the still, though, one time, the last time you flipped, you flipped one that maintained its horizontal plane the entire time and then basically kind of landed where it was flipped, like rotating in the air. And you're like, that's a good one. And I'm like, that did not rotate I like once. that you held on to that. I don't even remember that. But go ahead. All right. I, I just remember, it's one of those that sometimes comes off your thumb weird. And it oh, has. Yeah. So it stays like that, but it's, it's spinning like this. Yeah. yeah. So it's maintaining, but it's like, oh, that's really weird. Where did it flip off my thumb type of thing? I get it right every other. Boom. Okay. Buried. Yeah. Uh, and you had... Dread. Dread. So then I should flip for this one, right? Go what, for it. What's your, what do you have left? What's your number five? Uh, my five is 127 hours. Oh, mine's Dog Day Afternoon. You're going to tell me 127 hours is a better film than Dog Day Afternoon? You're going to leave it to the coin flick? Really? <laughs> I would say 127 hours is actually better than buried. I probably should have had that higher. I'm going to switch that. So I'm going to put 127 there. Oh, now you're going to put buried over dog day afternoon? I think you got to put dog day. If that's the if that's the battle. I agree to a two two coin flip situation. So a second coin flip is needed. Your ego need to be winning. It's, it's not that. terrible. It's, it's terrible. I This is why Chicago is much like a much Super like my my, my conciliation before. Oh. I am keeping the same stance. I'm not violating the agreement that I set forth. I am being honorable, lawful, civilized. I hope you're looking at the side I am doing. That's, that's fine. Those out there can understand that I am operating within the construct of the law. Mm. I, I, say, so, I know a lot of you that join me in the side I. That's fine. And outlaw not agreeing to the laws, not surprising. <laughs> All right. And the look on your face, there seems to be so. Oh, dog yeah, day yeah, afternoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God. I was a little nervous. Well, thankfully, we can play it back, mm-hmm. and I can go like Zapruder-like film, and I can go back and watch your eyes from that angle You're coming up <laughs> and see if there's a glint of mischief twinkling from uh, betwixt that corner. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Uh, do you need me to get the drums, or are we good without them? I feel like we're good without them this time. You want to go with the drums? I can go um, get them real quick if you want to vamp. Sure. Go okay. get them. Right, we'll go grab vamp. I'll vamp. Because your you know, desk is literally right there. So you can run to it. Uh, here's me vamping. There's still people in the office, just like last time. So I got to keep this on the hush hush. I wonder what Adam and Cody did. They manage to find time to put graphics in there. Well, I, we'll find out together because we'll be watching this in two weeks' time, or one week's time, or two weeks once they put their editing on. I believe. All right, you ready to do this? Let's do it. All right, the top ten single location movies. Yeah. At number ten, Mulock. At number nine. Ex Machina. At number eight. Dog Day Afternoon. At number seven. Dread. At number six. 127 Hours. At number five. Rear Window. At number four. The Breakfast Club. At number three. The Raid Redemption. Number two. Moon. And our number one single location movie is... Twelve Angry Men. Twelve Angry Men. And Those we, kids! Yeah. We've got David Mitchell Baker's list to read. Yeah, let's do that. And thank you again for creating this topic. It was a good one, uh, David. Yes, and it was. We thank you for it. So he says, here's my list. I'd forgotten how many great options there were for this topic. So there were a lot of tough omissions for me personally. Uh, too many honorable mentions to list. Man, it's the same. Mm-hmm. Hope you guys found... Uh, f- I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. At number 10, he's got The Lighthouse. Oh, interesting. It's one of the few I still I haven't, haven't seen. I haven't seen that. Yeah, either. Yeah. Uh, nine, he's got The Breakfast Club. Yes. Nine! Eight is Krisha. I don't know Krisha. I don't know Krisha either. K-R-I-S-H-A. Okay. Krisha. Uh, seven is The Hateful Eight. I don't agree. Yeah. They're in the wagon for yeah, long, and leading up to. It's 45 time. minutes before they're all in there together legitimately. Right. And we flash back, although it is the same location. Yeah, I'll take we that. Flash back. I have no problem with that. Okay. But everybody, all the players don't show up to the story until 45 minutes in. To me, that's that's numerous locations. Uh, Six is Snowpiercer. That's a great call. That is a great fucking call. Damn it. Birdman, I thought about. That's his five. Yeah, but he's in and out. He runs around. If you want to say the the location is his mind, perhaps. Uh, Okay. Exactly. Okay. Well, because the ending is so obtuse. Yeah. Did you call me? (laughs) Exactly. That's where I learned to... 
view it like that. Like it is. Where's that from again? Oh, Define, Shawshank. That's right, Shawshank. Obtuse. By the way, shout out to Clancy Brown who's playing a great LBJ on The Crown. Yes, he is. Ah, damn, I was like, I like that a lot. Oh, damn, Lamas. Anyway, uh, yeah. So five is Birdman. Yep. Four is Das Boot. Das Boot. Which we, the two of us said no to. Three yep. is Die Hard. Two is Rear Window. Mm-hmm. One is Angry, 12 Angry Men. Oh, yeah. See, good. Everyone yeah. knows it. But he's got rear window at two. Yeah. He agrees with me on Die Hard. Okay. We should have had Snowpiercer. We should have had Snowpiercer. One of us should have had Snowpiercer. That's a, that makes my list, and I can't believe I didn't see it. Damn it. Do they, just, think it. do they just start out on the train? Yeah. Damn Because the post-apocalyptic event has already happened, so this is society. This I is reality. Feel like we should move Dog Day Afternoon off and put Snowpiercer on there. I think this could be a first for the show. All right. I'm good with that. We should put 127 hours off, really, but I'll accept taking Dog Day off to put a fan. That seems more fair. Mm. See, now they can see your body language and hear your tone. At number seven. <laughs> Snowpiercer. <laughs> Edit remix on the show. <laughs> do, 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 do. Um, uh, all right. Well, that's our episode for this week uh, on the well, Top we, Ten Show. Yep. We, uh, I'm uh, just going to say, if you want to uh, – that's the single location movies. If you want to tune out now, feel free. But we're about to get uh, – we're about to g- give a lot of love to the patrons of the show, read out their names on the show. Uh, after that, we're just going to wrap up. So uh, if you want to hang out, feel free. If not, no worries at all. All. Yeah. And this is just our thanks to every patron um, at $5 and up that mm-hmm. it supports us. It's a way of of saying thanks aloud once a month to you yeah. uh, solely. And we wouldn't be here without you. We wouldn't be back on a video. We wouldn't be going out and doing the live dates, uh, yeah. which I need to talk to you about oh, after great. the show. Sure. Sounds good. Um, and yeah. So you ready? You got yeah. it up in front uh, of you? I think so. Let me bring it up real quick. No on problem. the Excel spreadsheet. Thank you to Christopher Alexakos. Yes. Mr. Alexakos. For compiling this for us. Put in the work to help us get this topic from David Mitchell Baker yeah. and also help him put together the shout outs and the relists and the guys hustling, posting you know stuff on Patreon for us every once and again. Yeah. It's very kind. I, I, I guess it turns out the classics that are super, super long that we did in the past yeah. exceed the, the amount of space that an audio file can take up oh. at one time, oh, like it's you. a singular post. Okay. So you had to find a workaround for that. Oh, wow. I just saw it on Facebook. Much like, respect. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. I mean, a guy is fantastic. Yep. It's amazing. We have yep. so much great help between them and Mike Shea and Joe Barra, Kristen Smith and uh, Matthew Hasso, all of yep. them. It's yep. amazing every time. We would not be here literally without you and the patrons. So let's just jump right in. Let's you ready? It. Yeah. So at eight is AJ Barrera. Uh, Aaron Carroll. Aaron Hine. Abby Lugo. Uh, Adelardo, Adelardo Fuente. Alex Ramsey. Alex Russell. Alexander Marzonia. Aliyah Moore. Ahmad Ali. Andre uh, Constanesco. Andres Mendoza. Or Constantinesco, sorry. Yeah, sure. Andrew Herbs. Andrew Hayes. Andrew Marker. Andrew Nally. Andrew O'Day. Andy Ortiz. Andy Tan. Angela Dashner. Anthony Castlenova. Anthony George. April Rybacki. Archie Bear. Asa Denning. Ashley Prowls. Uh, Marlon Tuttle. Ben Quirk. Ben Archimbaugh. Ben Cartwright. Bernie Knapp. Billy Gilliams. Blair Simpson. Blake Gant. Blake O'Brien. Bobby Carney. Bobby Michael. Brandon Caridi. Brandon Monroe. Brian Akins. Cameron Belgrade. Cameron Chapman. Charlie McKenna. Chelsea Lewis. Chris Cabrera. Chris Consiglio. Chris Jones. Chris Judge. Chris Lemke. Christopher Brockman. Christopher McIntyre. Christos Alexakos. Clay Williams. Cody Seal. Connor Teal. Corey Trainer. Corey O'Connor. Cody Markham. Cody Rexford. Dale Varley. Dan Petraglia. Dan Somerville. Daniel Chiput. Uh, Daniel McCarty. Darren Bush. David Mitchell Baker. Oh, I'm sorry. David Gregson. David Mitchell Baker. Boom. Deborah Torres. Dimitri Milat. Uh, DJ Red Hot Cox. There he is, buddy. <laughs> Drew Burkhart. Drew Enns. Dwayne Joseph Burke. Sup, Dwayne. Dylan Buller Dempsey. Dylan Johnson. Dylan Yoon. Ed Buzzkirk. Edward Dobbins. Ellis Machaka. Eric Bloor. Eric Bruin. Eric Grebner. Eric Stevenson. Evan Bistrom. Evan Zoller. Frank Montoya. Gareth Weldon. Jeff Kelly. George Manchaca. <laughs> Giancarlo Simonetta. Grecia Romero. Uh, Gunnar R. Hans Eskelson. Haley Morton. Houston Bodily. Ian Horner. Ian Brick Beltran Lopez. Uh, Ewan Williams. Isaiah Hoffman. Uh, Jacob Pullen. James Appleby. James Nost. Yes, sir. Oh. He, uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> thank you so much, Dad. I uh, wonder if you're listening as oh, of right shout now. Shout out. Thank you, Mr. Nose. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nose. Hey, man, uh, my father in law. They're both uh, supporters and listeners of the show. Thank you so and much. And he gave me guff a couple weeks ago for based on a book for not having to kill a mockingbird. Oh. And I was like, you're probably right. That's a fair point. You're probably right. That's a fair point. Oh, yeah. uh, James Leggett. James Petty. James Trapani. James Winstead. Uh, Jan Via Canazar. Jason Bradshaw. Jason Lau. Jason Shrum. Jeff Saliba. Jen Kemp. Jeremy Bowers. Jeremy Metz. Uh, JIC317. Uh, Jim Payne. Jim White. Joe Hyun Yoon. Joe Fairley. Joe Ibarra. Joey Anthony. Johannes Schmidt. John Daus. John Keefe. Jonathan Garrow. Jonathan Chase. Jordan Wiltshire. Joseph, Wiltshire. Oh, okay. Joseph Burt Whistle. Joseph Viola. Joshua Stetz. Josh Lawrence. Josh Mabry. Josh Murphy. Josh Sachs. Joshua William. Joshua Wynn. Juan Reyes. Johanna Linavirta. Julian Key. Justin McDonald. Justin O'Neill. Catherine Samuels. Keith Archer. Keith Below. Keith Fitzgerald. Uh, Kayla Long or Kelly W. Ken Reels. Kevin Fuss. Kristen Smith. Yo, Christia Veselchik. Uh, Kristen Kurtz. Uh, Kyle Beckworth. Kyle Feller. Kyle Spahn. Laura Deverson. Lawrence Witt. Louis Berrigan. Luke Allison. Luke Larson. Mackenzie Horner. Magalidore. Mallory Garrett. Marcel Behrman. Marcus Davenport. Mark Fawcett. Mark Menchaca. Oh, the three Menchacas. <laughs> Matt Chipping. Matt Hall. Matt Hannigan. Matt Simmons. Matthew Asso. Hey, Matthew Lee Cravens. Matthew Pullen. Maurice Robinson. Michael D. Dyke. Michael Kelly. Uh, Michael McDade. Michael Schmur. Mike Barrington. Mike Shea. Mitchell Burl. Nathan Leonard. Niall Blackie. Nick Francis. Nick Dornoff. Nicholas Smith. Uh, Nizar Alabasi. Noel Kelleher. Pat Bufamante. PJ Patrick Campbell. Patrick Mullen. Phil Neglia. Philip Renshaw. Philip Lane. Ravi Prasad. Reagan Lovick. Rice Seaborn. Uh, Rob McDonald. Robert Francesco Sorace. Uh, Robert Haley. Rodrigo Valverde the third, Roque Aureliana, Ruben Enriquez, Ryan M. Brandos, Ryan McKenna, Ryan Nem, Scott Lynch, yeah, Scott Zarnicki, Scott Collar, Seamus Braytag, Sean Scott, Seth Shearer, Shane Noble, Simon Bruyard, Spencer Freightway, Stacy Flores, Steve Schluckebeyer, Stephen Anderson, Stephen Armstrong, uh, Sujayanth Fernando, The Blast from Our Past Podcast, nice. The Scent of Oz, thank you, Steve, mm, <laughs> Thomas Price, <laughs> Thorsten M. Bueller, Tim Begg, Tim Franco, Tim Reimert, Timothy Berg, Timothy R. Williams, Todd Whitkey, Wayne Murphy, Victor Whiskey Alund. Interesting. That's Wiley Todd. Uh, Will Morse. Willie Logie. Uh, Giggle San or Exerian. And finally, the one and only Mr. Zach Butts. Zach Butts. Our thanks to each and every one of you yeah, that supports the show. We can't thank you enough. We would not be here without all of your, uh, you know, goodwill, intentions. Yeah. Your actions, everything. We can't thank you enough. It means a lot. It does. It means the world. Yeah. Yeah. And, absolutely. Uh, yeah, all the interaction that we get at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash top 10 show, people posting healthy tons of debate about what comes up on the show, yeah. people debating the debates we had of whether or not a movie should be included or discluded. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting to see and get like an idea of what general consensus is. The double bill one is a massive uh, yeah. battle. Pe- I'm enjoying it. It goes back and forth. Some mm. people you know, agree with this. Some people agree with that. Yeah, all yeah. arguments are heard. Yeah. You know, well, nobody's – Nothing's uh, tabled. And nothing is, you know, terrible. Yeah. It's like, that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. Exactly. I, I kind of view it like this. It's kind of it's enjoyment of these debates. Yeah. yeah. And then as the people that know each other, they kind of break each other's balls because they understand. They have a language between them. Right. And they don't spread it out to, oh, if I don't know you as well. At least I don't see that as often. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there, and uh, for me, uh, at Matt Nost on Twitter, M-A-T-T-K-N-O-S-T, and tons of debate there about the show. Absolutely. You can follow me at the Roca says on Twitter and on Instagram. See all the things I'm doing there as well. Uh, and we've got so much more stuff coming down the pike. You know, if you are uh, discovering us for the first time here on Collider, the Collider Live YouTube feed or on the Collider Live feed, podcast feed, uh, I encourage you to go back and listen to our other episodes, listen to our other stuff. And if you want to become a patron, feel free at uh, www.patreon.com slash the top 10, number 10 there. Go and see the multiple tiers that we have there. But just come along. Follow Follow both of us. Follow us uh, uh, on our uh, on our Twitter as well at Top Ten Show. All of that. Get involved uh, and come with us. And trust me, you, you won't regret it. Yeah, and Top Ten Show is all spelled out. 
as is the Facebook group when you put it in the groups, and then yeah. we use try and use the number ten everywhere else. Yeah, but you know sometimes people 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 beat us to the punch. It wasn't an original stuff. idea. So. It wasn't. Yeah, and we more than it's not like mm-hmm. we're dude. We should sue. <laughs> It's other person for having the exact same thought long before we did. First off, we need to get David Letterman. Oh, right. In oh. retirement and retroactively wow. go back. The idea of – That would be the greatest thing ever if we get David Letterman on the show. Almost oh. impossible. It would be the greatest thing ever. Almost. I would say with a guaranteed certainty, 99.9% impossible. There is a chance. There's always We'd a chance. We'd have to go to Indiana, I imagine. Uh, I think he lives in Montana. Oh, Montana. I don't know, maybe it's upstate New York or something. All right. But he, Either way, we'd have to find out. Pretty sure he's got a big piece of property and he chills out there. Never say never, man. You never know. Yeah. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Never say never. Never say never. I, I, look, I love uh, – uh, oh, shit. Fievel. What is the fucking – Never say never again. Uh, and then they went west. Five goes west. An American Tale? Yes. Is that what it's called? American Tale. American Tale. <laughs> the fucking Wish Upon a Star? Yeah. The, uh, Love yeah. that movie the when Ross I was a kid. That James Ingram song. That's right, yeah. There are no cats in America. I loved that movie Oof, as a kid. Clearly. <laughs> Much yeah, love. I saw man. it in the theater, I think, more than once. Oh. And had the VHS when it came out and was excited for Five Goes West and I, I liked it yeah, yeah. at that time. I yeah. liked it, but knew it wasn't as good as the first. And I could tell you last time. Well, I, I've seen that movie a lot. Like that, Land Before Time. Oh, yeah. People love that Land Before Time stuff. That first one? Dan Bl- Don Bluth, yeah. It, I've seen that so many times. Wow. Okay. The ones after that, maybe one or two here or there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it took them a while, for, I think, for the second one to come out. Uh, it's, it's a different window. Like you said about Breakfast Club, that's your kind yeah, of Yeah, I was still a to kid. Me, I was too old for it. Yeah, I was like point. seven or something yeah. when that came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His little like, foot and his mom and yeah. she dies and this okay. fucking leaf in a puddle. And oh, my God. Stop it. You're ruining for the new generation. It's fine. Okay. That's pretty early on. Yeah, okay. It's in the movie, early. you mean? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Fair enough. He loses his mom. It's not like Bambi. It, it's end. a Bambi thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's in the beginning. <laughs> Well, I'm glad they didn't show that for Bambi. That'd be a little more traumatizing. Mom? Anyway, all right. Well. There it is, guys. <laughs> We're closing on that. You ready in it? Thank you so much, everybody, that tuned into the top 10 this week, and especially yeah. on Collider. If you can't find us and you're listening, you find us, just uh, go to the Collider live feed uh, wherever it's at, and yep. you can find the show there. Yep. Uh, on so uh, – and the video comes out a week after our show comes out, and that comes out on Tuesdays for our patron members. Right. Patron we, should, members. we should explain that. Yeah. If you're a patron member, you will get the video on the day of that the audio drops. Everybody gets the audio when it drops. Yes. Uh, no matter what feed. If you're subscribing to the Collider Live feed or subscribe to our 10, top 10 feed, you get the audio the day it drops. But the video is reserved for patrons. Was it $20 and above? 10 bucks and above. 10 bucks and above. They get uh, the video a week ahead of time after that. Yeah. You all get the And we're dropping them on Saturdays from what I understand – at currently at Collider, and then maybe that'll adjust to Fridays. But for right now, look for the video on Friday, yeah. on Saturday. So yeah, but we'll it's there up. for you. You it know, is. on Monday, first thing. If you don't have anything to watch when yeah. you tune it up, you're like, I like to watch things at work because some people tape on Sundays for yeah. release on Monday, but Monday's kind of a slower day. Yeah. So hey, check us out on Monday. Let us know um, what's going on. Yeah, we'd love to see you know uh, or have this discussion. Then if you guys are just getting to it, hit us up. Hey, yeah. I just watch this. Really good. Blah blah blah. Or how didn't you have this and Sometimes it's like, I don't know, that's not a triple build me because of X, Y, and Z, but mm-hmm. I understand your points. It's a healthy conversation. But that well, is it this week for the We're almost at 4,000 views on the first episode. That's not bad incredible. because not it dropped bad. out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. We have almost 4,000 views pretty much two days ago as we're recording this. Yeah. So that's pretty incredible. So keep coming aboard, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, all right, we'll talk to you next time. That's Matt Nost. I'm John Rogue on the Top 10 Show. Take care. Adios. Adios.